Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We have not only made it to Friday, it is Good Friday, and Happy Easter to those of you that uh, celebrate the holiday this weekend. Uh, it should be a great time for family and friends. Uh, we have a great show for you today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome morning. to another edition of the Carton Show. That guy right there is David Jacoby. Yes. Hey, everybody. Yes. Uh, Gotta look my man man right here, Super Bowl champion, former Giants wide receiver, right. Mr. Cruz. Victor Cruz. Cruz. And, of course, big fella himself, Super Bowl champion from Hofstra, weighing in at 285 pounds, yes. Yes. six yes. foot four, nice. Willie Anthony Aloysius Cologne. So, uh, yesterday was a great day for two reasons. One, how about the New York Yankees? How about yeah. the Yankees? Down 4 nothing early, Nasty Nestor struggling, gives up the bomb in the second, and then he said enough is enough. And Soto with the big RBI single right. and, of course, throws the dude out at the plate. And the Yankees with a come from behind victory start the season off 1-0. and oh. Yeah, I love it. The bottom line, pay that man everything you got in the bank <laughs> in the New York Yankees. Wasn't the greatest <laughs> throw I've ever seen, but good enough to – Opening uh, day throw Good enough, good enough, good enough. Yeah. Good enough, good enough. One hop, yeah. one hop. Clemente would have thrown yeah. it out of line. Ethan loves the throw, by the way. I one hop. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a Yankee fan. I like you guys. I was on my couch watching it at 410 yesterday, and it was great. And baseball's back. A lot of teams have their opener today, including right here the New York Mets. But Yankees get a big win. It's just important to start the season off on the right foot. Come yeah, from behind yeah. victory. All the guys are playing well. Guys are making it happen. I'm excited for the season, man. Yes, yes, yes. So more baseball, of course, throughout the entire summer. World Series is on Fox. Don't forget that. I want to show you real quick uh, the anatomy of a loss, if I may. Uh, I'll oh, be like sir. Dr. Carton here Love for that. a moment. Alabama, North Carolina last night. Uh, for my money, the best game that Great was played game. last Great night. Game. Uh, and uh, Alabama, to their credit, congratulations to Crimson Tide. Big win. Big win. They beat Carolina. I, I'm going to start you off midway in the second half. Uh, Carolina's got a three-point lead, and a nondescript uh, opportunity comes up for them. And I want to sh- show this to you real quick, because these are the plays people forget about, okay? Carolina up three, second half, easy-peasy, two-handed stationary dunk, right? Flush it home, big fella. And Carolina would go five there, okay? Mm -hmm. He misses the dunk. Keep that in mind just for a moment. Put that in your back pocket. What was the final score of the game? Carolina lost by two. Two. Now, we always talk about what happens in the final moments. You know, at the buzzer, a couple seconds left. That missed dunk cost them an opportunity to win the game or maybe be in overtime. But it gets worse, okay? There's a guy on Carolina. His name is Jalen Withers, okay? He is not going pro. Uh, Good basketball player. Good enough to play Carolina. And that's where the career ends. So Carolina's up one. Just over a minute to go. 15 seconds on the shot clock. He is not a jump shooter. So what does he do? Because the moment's too big for him. Oh, I'm wide Who open. That day? Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Man. Clank. The guy has not made a three-point shot in over a month, by the way. Wow. Okay? He's in over it. a month. He's has not it. made a three-point shot. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Rain drops. Uh, clickety clank. Oh, man. Alabama gets the rock. Down one. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. 22. 22. They get the ball down and low. And who do you think fouls the kid on Alabama? Not Withers. You got it right, Victor Cruz. Jalen Withers uh, playing defense, comes over to help. That's good help defense. Uh, Commits the foul and one. Alabama takes the lead, and they never give it up. And Carolina fans are wondering, how come we're not going to the Elite Eight? Because the first dude missed the dunk. That was Baycott. Baycott. And Jalen Withers decides, all of a sudden, I'm Steph Curry. I'm going to make a three. And I'm Draymond Green. I'm going to foul everybody if they get the ball in the paint. Congratulations to Alabama. And that is 
the anatomy of a loss. Oh, well, credit Bama's Grant now. So he had 24 points and 12 yeah, yeah, boards. Yeah. And also, listen, Bama shot 42% from three-point land. So it, it You helped. missed the yeah. dunk. Why are you 6'10"? No, it, it, it hurts. Flush it home. I'm going to tell you why it hurts. It's also his seventh year at North Carolina. That's yeah. what I was going yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. By, by year seven, you got to be able to flush down a yeah. two-handed dunk. Especially. Yeah. It's not just the two points. It's the momentum that your team built uh, a exactly. basket. And then, exactly. and then that happens. It's not just that position. But you call me, you're back. right. He, this is this how he ended his career as a, <laughs> as a Tar Heel. He's literally just like that haunts you. Like we joke, he's been on the team for five years. Yeah. <laughs> like you're still there. I and love the way it. this I game was playing out. This was a defensive oh. game. This was physical. Was this entire yeah. game was up and down pace. Like you gotta, you but gotta like, make that bucket. It, and because there's plenty of time left, no one else is gonna show you that. Yeah. Yeah. But but that kid remembers that kid did not sleep last night. Yeah. And as a guy who Tough. went to Syracuse, I hated program. I understand a lot of people out there do hate North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina Blue is my favorite shade of blue. Oh. But when the powerhouses lose, uh, I get great joy. Are we doing, are we doing Mount Rushmore Blues like this show? As a matter of fact, I have done a Mount Rushmore Blue. And Carolina is number one. Thank got you very it, much for it, that. It, yeah. Royal is number two. Navy. If you want me to keep blue. going, I can. Yankee yeah. Blue? Yeah. Yeah. Yankee no. Blue? No. No, you don't like Yankee Blue? You just said what? you're a Yankee fan. Whoa. What happened Whoa. in the last five minutes that you were denouncing no. the pinstripes? It's not, a, it's not a Mount Rushmore Blue. Sorry. It's, oh, wow. It's Sorry. not third on the Mount Rushmore Blue. I almost wanted to throw mentioned. your laptop. That's <laughs> not myself. We got to take a break. Yeah, we're here for a big Friday show. We got tons of football. We got NBA basketball as well as we get you ready for the big weekend. And I can't believe we're a week away from the Masters, Vic. Right there. He's very Here's excited it. about right that. There. All that coming Be up there. after this. Second chance. Playing the UFL for a second chance. Trying to help these other guys get to their their ultimate goal and make the lead. Tomorrow we get live spring football on Fox. It is the champion of the USFL, the Birmingham Stallions, against the champion of the XFL, the Arlington Renegades. That's Saturday and Sunday. There are also some games, but uh, I don't really watch that network. There you <laughs> Look at the top three plays from last season's. This right there is EJ Perry, 72-yard pass to Marcus Sims. Jeez. Look at Don. That. That's oh. number three. Give it to Jimmy. Looking like James Bradbury playing defense there. Oh, number right, two, right. we have Alex Magoo <laughs> with a touchdown <laughs> to <laughs> Deion Kane. <laughs> Magoo to Kane. This is the number one play. Go ahead. Oh, this is number two. Oh, oh this is this, this is Magoo. Oh, oh. Magoo to Kane. Go get that. What a play. On the Yo, run, Joe too. Kane was running for the Heisman a few years ago <laughs> in the program. I'm not sure if you guys remember that. One of the greatest football movies <laughs> of all time. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great play, nice move on the run. And I'm pretty sure the greatest play last year in the UFL, or the, Here it is. Uh, the USFL, was this 109 yard From missed field goal return for a touchdown. Derek Dillon. He's Derek Dillon. Gonna go all the way. That's my oh, show big fella, get there, there big fella. Go. Those are my showboats. There you go. That's From the left call, to the man. right to the left. Running. Get there, 90. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, man. There you go, there you go, there you go. So those were the four best plays, Good according play. to the experts in last year's league and now the leagues have merged and uh, we're all going to pick our favorite team and watch some good uh, spring football, right? So right. one of the things I found interesting about this league is the rule that they have after you score a touchdown. What we generally call the extra point isn't just that. You have an option. If you're on the two-yard line, you get one point. Nice. If you take it from the five, you get two points. Mm. And if you can score from the ten, you get three points, meaning a nine-point game is still a one-possession game. What do you feel about this? Could we ever see something like this in the NFL? Uh, no, probably not. Be you know, because the last thing in the screw is the most important. You're not allowed to kick an extra yeah, point, yeah. so yeah, that's the only all. way to get points on top of the touchdown. But you know, some of, one of the beauties of a league like this is that you can try things out with the thought process yeah. being, would that work in the NFL, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the NFL has adopted an old XFL uh, rule with the kickoffs now mm -hmm. that your know, guys start at the 40 and they can't run until the receiver, you know, catches the ball. So that should allow for more returns, hopefully. So. Yeah. I'm with you on that, but it should allow for more returns than we had last year, at least. Like so th th some of these rules at some point will make their way to Sunday in the fall. 
But I'm just happy that, you know, I can tell my wife and my kids that daddy's busy on Saturdays now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because uh, it's, look, it, we have a deal in my house, all right? If there's football on TV, they assume I have to watch it. Mm -hmm. So for work. gardening, for work, for work. <laughs> laundry, <laughs> dishes, <laughs> <laughs> make some wings and let me be happy. And that's what my house is going to be on Saturday. You know, I like the rule because if you're trailing by nine and you score a touchdown, you tie the game, right? Yeah. So, so many times we watch in sports, man, especially in NFL, where you're like, man, if there was just one more point we can get, we're right in the game. Yeah. Now outside it's outside kick. It's like well, we have to score, and then we get the onside kick, yep. and then if Bill goes like, no, we're down nine, we can still make it happen. Guys, something happened uh -oh. involving the New York you Knicks. You feel yesterday. passionate about this. Yeah, he does. That <laughs> is, it, it's a revelation Why? unlike <laughs> any other revelation. You First thing you see that man right there? Before, right? Isaiah Hartenstein, the backup center, who is still the starting center now because Mitchell Robinson just came back, is Isaiah Hartenstein. He's become a fan favorite here in New York. And he went on the Roommates podcast with, um, with Brunson and Hart. And uh, let's just listen. Okay. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, are you black? <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to cover that. I'm actually happy about this. Ex explain your blackness. <laughs> what level of blackness? So my level of blackness. I mean, I, I put. <laughs> I, you know, it's like light skin. I'm, I'm bright skin. Oh, so Ooh, like, I'm okay, above, bright skin. I like that. I'm above. My child's bright skin. I'm, I'm above light skin. No, but yeah, my dad's black. Okay. This is shocking to me. <laughs> I always thought that he was a Caucasian man. And uh, be honest, how does this revelation change the way you feel about Isaiah Hartenstein? It, I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, really? All. Not at all? No. Not at all, He's my guy. Yeah. Uh, He's my guy. Uh, I see you guys are, are funny. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back out of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. and I'll tell you why. Crazy because I don't see race. There's nothing I can say on this topic <laughs> you on can. national TV yeah. that is not going to get me in trouble. <laughs> you understand? Because no matter how I answer that question, <laughs> if I answer it, someone could no, say, no, this oh, they're proof. They're proof. No, 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 stay in your position. You got a black shirt on. Great. 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 Stay in your position. You don't see race. It doesn't affect you whatsoever. Look, you, just see, you just see human soul. It, race I'm telling exist. you, I have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give you that answer, I know exactly what's coming my way. Yeah. Uh, so I've been around the block long enough. So Willie, how, about it? Willie, how does this change the way you feel about Isaiah Hart and Steve? Man, he's the Mike McDaniel of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> like, <what? laughs> that's a good one. Like, that's that. what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get that one. That's, that's, that's what it is. Listen, uh, he's now invited to Kwanzaa dinner. Right? <laughs> he's invited to Kwanzaa. Uh, I don't know. Me him getting a you. bar fight, I'm getting cut first. Can't wait to have you put that out. I got to be honest. I thought Elvis was the whitest black guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that paper? Is when it's on the list. Yeah. Now during the break, I'll have a lot to say. But I will not say it right now on this show. We got a lot more basketball. Will come your way. Obviously, a big weekend as we have about 10 games to go in the NBA and uh, more smoke coming out of uh, the New York Giants offices. We'll get Victor's take on another quarterback that they might be looking at for this year's draft right after this. We had opening day yesterday. They had opening day in Kansas City with the Royals. And um, that man right there, Andy Reid, look at him go out to the mound oh, with a yeah. Lombardi trophy yeah. in the left yeah. hand. Yeah. Love that. Greg, yeah. how do you feel about this flex? Uh, I can't wait to see. Uh, 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 Let it run. Uh, uh, That, you guys right. are applauding. That. that don't count. What? Wow. First off, he's 10 feet in front of the mound, and the catch is 10 feet in front of the plate. He's 75. Yeah, yeah that's what diabetes looks like when it throws a ball. Oh, Look, man. Wow. How about we Andy actually Reece throw it? How about we throw the first pitch the way a first pitch should be thrown? Look, he's, look at that. he's, he's right in front of the mound. Chip, right? He's right in front of the mound. He's uh, struggling to walk out there. All right, I, I take it all back. He's struggling to walk. That's a great throw. <laughs> great job by Andy Reid. Uh, <laughs> I'm more impressed that George Brett's still alive, to be honest. That was good. Because that was George Brett there uh, in front of the dish, uh, uh, catching uh, the first. To be fair, he was very far in front of the dish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we all love Andy Reid. I told you, I just watched you know, him with Guy Fieri at the Pig Witch uh, in Kansas City in pork. Uh, and I love pork. Who doesn't love pork, right? Um, so, yeah, it's great. Andy Reid threw out the first pitch. La, la, la. All right, time for first and football. We have... I tell you what, just real quick, okay. I'll tell you why. This is how I think it's a fair way to judge coaches in the NFL. Can my coach kick your coach's ass? Is I that, win. Is that a fair way to do I it? I think so. I think so. So, like, of all the coaches in the league right now, That's what coach is kicking my coach's ass? Well, wait, when, Maybe yeah. one. Antonio Pierce. 
I'll give AP a shot. Okay. I think he's probably uh, handled himself with the knuckles. I feel like Mike Tomlin can get around. Maybe Mike Tomlin. Matter of fact, that's going to be a Mount Rushmore later you on. You don't okay. think Jim Harbaugh can get busy? He seems like Not a biter. Not against Robert Sala. He's a biter. He's Jim Harbaugh is a biter. Biter, scratcher, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, who knows what else is that guy, right? I mean, if Rabel was still a coach. I mean, oh, Rabel. Rabel. That's, that's, that's right. Rabel was the – I played against Rabel. Yeah, but Rabel's not a coach. Well, that happens. Yeah, so so that's why the New York Jets are going to win the Super Bowl this year, too. Because right. my coach can kick every other coach's ass. That's right. I said it. Sure, if that's the nice. In any event, good to see Andy Reid uh, able-bodied enough to throw out the first pitch. Uh, let's get to some football. Speaking of Andy Reid, Jacoby's got first in football. First in football before the draft, the Giants are going to have a private workout with da, 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 da. Drake May. They're Ooh. currently at the sixth spot. Do you expect them to move up to get a top quarterback? Because May won't be there at six. Uh, listen, maybe he will. Um, you know, it's funny how these things go. Uh, three months ago, Drake May was the locked-in, guaranteed second quarterback to be taken mm -hmm. uh, after Caleb Williams. He's always been number one, yeah, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, you don't even hear the name Drake May anymore. You hear, of course, Caleb Williams still at number one to Chicago. Now it's the J.J. McCarthy show, of course. Then you got Daniels uh, out of LSU, uh, who's uh, the Heisman Trophy winner. That outside a penis elbow, everyone's very high on him. And it's almost <laughs> like publicly we've totally forgotten about this kid, yeah. Drake May. Now, I'm not sure if it's a product of, you know, where he played. Not the, the best division in college football, obviously. But no joke, if you go back, and I did this last night, three months ago, all the, you know, the draft prognosticators, mm -hmm. and no one at this table claims to be, you know, a draft expert or draft Nick. You guys have your experiences, obviously, and we as broadcasters do. But it was 1-1A. One one it was Caleb Williams 1 and Drake May 1A. And they haven't played a game since then. So these are one of those times where sometimes be careful what you wish for. You know, the Carolina Panthers could have taken C.J. Stroud last year. Whoops. And for some ridiculously stupid reason, yeah. they, of course, went with Bryce Young. And Houston's like, thank you, Lord, <laughs> that I got C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I guarantee you that happens in this year's draft. Not with Caleb Williams at one. Yeah. Put him aside. But two, three, four, five. You know, the next four quarterbacks that are taken, one of those kids is going to be picked fourth or fifth and is going to be better than the other ones. And that's why I get scared when we start making these decisions based on pro days. I hate that. I think it's the dumbest way to judge whether or not a kid can play quarterback at the NFL level. So to answer that question, the Giants theoretically could sit at six, but then I do think there's five quarterbacks taken, depending on who moves up to four, mm -hmm. you're going to take the Cardinal pick. And then the Giants are sitting there going, uh-oh, Penix? Ugh. Right? So my gut would tell me if they're bringing Drake May in for a private workout, they have never denied the fact, uh, the rumors about J.J. McCarthy being on you know, their draft board. I think the Giants probably move up to four, or they're playing one of the greatest games of possum ever played, and they trade down and get more draft collateral. i am be 100. I, I think they're playing possum because if you look at Drake May, he's been injured. Talking about ACL, talking about dealing yeah. with the shoulder. Valley, he was very accurate in college. He rushed for over, uh, he rushed for over 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. Uh, at the end of the day, he's, he, he comes with injuries, right? Yep. You're trying to get rid of a quarterback with injuries. Right. So why would you draft a kid who's, you know, pretty much rap sheet looks like Now, his? part of that could also be we want other teams to think we want them. Right. Because yeah. that's, that's the game you, they play. You want to put out false smoke signals so that other teams are worried. Wait a minute. What do the Giants know about Drake May that we don't know? Let's take another look at him. Oh, the Giants are going to take Drake? Maybe we should take him. Yeah. There are some teams that are riddled with indecision in that regard and that's why I think the first five picks in this draft probably we can even go to six to include the New York Giants uh, are the most intriguing first five picks that we've had in the draft in a long time. Yeah, but when you look at the Giants offseason, right, they lost Saquon Barkley, the, the, they're losing the disdain of the fans out there. They need to make a splash. And what bigger splash to bring in a guy with toughness from a great quarterback tree, great quarterback coach that he played with in hardball. I lo I'm a J.J. McCarthy guy. Okay. I want them to bring in a guy like J.J. McCarthy. Even if you're just playing possum, even if you're just playing the game, bring him in, keep that hype up, get a good look at him, and see if he's the guy that can come and be behind uh, Daniel Jones, at least learn the game, learn how what it is to be a pro. I mean, look at Harbaugh's lineage, right? Andrew Luck, Alex Smith for years, Colin Kaepernick during that championship run. I would had. just, if I can kick back in that just for a Talk little bit, me. Vic. You uh, just uttered the words. I want to make sure I heard you correctly because sometimes my ears don't work, and I, I take ownership of that. 
Learn from Daniel Jones? Learn yeah. how to be a professional. Those words I heard? Learn how to be a professional. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Not how to play quarterback. No, not, yeah. not, not, not necessarily. But we are married to Daniel Jones because that's just the way the, the contract right. lines up. Uh, to me, J.J. McCarthy, you know some people have a certain look. Apparently Isaiah Hartenstein doesn't. But you know some people <laughs> just have a certain look. Tell me I'm wrong. Like, spot the line in this comment, okay. right? J.J. McCarthy just looks like a guy playing in New England. Doesn't he? He just has that, that like, you know, L.L. Bean kind of look to him. Like, you know, like, yeah, like, yo, know, the, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I got a smoking jacket yeah, on. And yeah. Yeah. One of the yeah, I don't know what that is, but sounds like something <laughs> New England. That's actually spot on. Yeah, like, J.J.'s got like that. He fits in New England perfectly, doesn't he? Uh, no. No? No, I don't no. like him. Can the guy with the yeah. just let me have that one, huh? Oh, Moving sorry. on to second and <laughs> football. Jets early. owner Woody Johnson is striking Buckets. down a report that right. he and Robert Sala had a heated argument at the owner's meeting. You see his statement right there. Craig, what do you think about the report and the response? Uh, the report is nonsense. It's BS. It was invented. And the gal on NFL Network has now walked it back because uh, she got it wrong. She wasn't in the building. She wasn't in the state that this alleged uh, you know, fighter argument took place in. And there were a number of reporters who I respect, namely Connor Hughes, who covers the Jets, does a great job, up, uh, who was there <clears throat> in the building and actually was there in the room right. the entire time Sala and Woody were in the room together. And he goes, look, I was there the entire time. Never took place. So I'm with Woody Johnson on this, and this is the problem now with some reporters and some networks where I got to get something out there. I got to break a story. I got to make it about me. It's uh, embarrassing that the NFL Network allowed that. The gal that did it did walk it back, which to me is even more embarrassing because yeah, yeah. now you're admitting you invented the entire thing or someone t whispered it in your ear and they have no credibility. But this is what it's like to be a Jet. Like, this doesn't happen to other but teams. like the VP, potential VP run for Aaron Rodgers, in, in this report, whether erroneous or not, can all of these things sort of affect, this, this offseason affect the Jets when it comes to training? No, zero. Once they, once they put pads on and go play football, everything else out is, is uh, out the window. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you something else. Stories like this can, I'm not saying this one will because we're so far away from training camps and actually playing football games. Stories like that can also galvanize a team. Because if I'm Woody Johnson, yeah. or if I'm Joe Douglas, the GM, or even if it got to Robert Sala, because he's you know, named in this ridiculous uh, story, you know, I would use it. See, man, no one's, no one. It's us against the world for real. Like, even the network that's supposed to be objective, because it's the NFL network, sure. even they're coming after us. So I could use it to galvanize the guys as an us versus the world kind of mentality. But this is what these, look, this is what people have to deal with these days. Yeah. Erroneous, invented, bogus reports that suddenly have credibility because the network that broadcasts them, and this one just stupid. Yeah, I, I hate it from Woody John's standpoint because I think we watched all week. He, he doesn't need help in the headlines, right? Like he, he, <laughs> he could draw up enough stuff for himself. But I think for the Jets moving forward, to your point, Craig, when you, when you birth yourself into that organization, this is what you have to deal with. The, the, you know, the true, the false, and what the hell was that, right? And that's kind of the mantra of being a Jet. And it's unfortunate because a lot of young guys who are about to get drafted into the NFL, and if you do land as a Jet, this is this is a waiting for you. This it's also just New York, right? Yeah. Like it's part of just being in New York City, understanding what the media has to offer, understanding that sometimes they're going to take your words and mix them right. around. Sometimes they're going to make up stories that aren't even true, yeah. and you have to go and denounce them for whatever reason. And that's the problem. Like you know, it was it wasn't that long ago that the Athletic put out this cockamamie story claiming they had 30 sources inside and outside the building yep. about the dysfunction around Aaron Rodgers and Robert Sala. Of course, Robert Sala was never interviewed or asked about it. Neither was Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, you know, can lean on these anonymous sources. Now you have some gal I've never heard of before on the NFL Network inventing a story yeah. and then being uh, embarrassed by the untruth of the story, having to walk it back and apologize. But it's the old adage that once it's out there, you can't put it back in. Right. right? What's it? Is that a toothpaste? Part? Once the toothpaste is the out there. No, no, yeah. not so much that one. That's the one. Toothpaste is that the one, too? You get the toothpaste. I thought you never put toothpaste back in the tube. No, that's not it. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. That's it. No, I heard it the first time you said it. I'm saying it again. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. No, I heard it the first two times you said it. Can't put the toothpaste. It's not the genie in the bottle. Is it like one with like a barn? Pandora's box? A barn? 
And a horse. horse and a the horse yeah. back in the ball. That makes sense. That makes sense. I have no idea. I think we should we'll move on to third in football. <laughs> I like how we you know, you know, it's like Jacoby, to be honest. It's, toothpaste? It's kind of like, you know, you can't put toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, that, back oh, God. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I love that yeah. take. Yeah. Like I came around. Moving on to third in football, <laughs> finally. Uh, the Tennessee Titans. They've added <laughs> Pollard, and they also added Ridley. And here's what D-Hop said about that. Calvin and I on the field is going to be hard to key on one of us. I think the sky's the limit, especially after getting a guy like Calvin. So I am very excited about this offense. Are the Titans an AFC sleeper? I don't think they're a sleeper anymore. I think really? They, I think you can make the argument they've had the best offseason in football. Uh, they went from a team that wasn't a playoff uh, contender to a team that I think absolutely is not just a playoff contender, but a division title contender right now. Uh, it, all, of course, all comes down to their now second-year quarterback and Will Levis. Yeah. Uh, Will Levis has the gun. We know that. Yep. Uh, now the question is, can he figure out how to play competent football series after series after series uh, in the NFL? Yeah. But give Tennessee credit. You know, they, they decided we need a new voice in the locker room, so they depart from Vrabel. Had a great run there, obviously, and a lot of playoff success. They're committed to a young stud quarterback, so the Tannehill days are over. Uh, they get rid of, obviously, you know, the bellwether running back, right, and Henry, and their team looks completely different and, for my money, much better. Yeah, I, I listen, this is, this is an offense that didn't score a lot of points uh, last season. They were kind of in the bottom of the barrel right along with the Jets. But at the end of the day, you do have to be optimistic because you have Calvin Ridley and D-Hop along with Tony Pollard. But they need major help. I mean, they was able to acquire center, but they still need help on the offensive line. It's a big year for Will Levis, right? Oh, because it's the we, year. It's yeah. the year because we talk about a time. The, the windows for quarterbacks, if you're the guy or not, is shorter and shorter. So he's going to have to come out and play official within this offense. But the Titans, I'm still sleeping on them. They are nobodies. Now, look, they were 27th in the league last year in scoring, and Will Levis didn't start the year as the starting quarterback, of course. He got in, and, you know, he did not complete 60% of his passes. That's mm-hmm. kind of like, you yep. know, the new Mendoza line. You better be over 60 in the NFL these yeah. days. Uh, eight touchdowns, four picks, so two to one, yep. which, uh, okay, for a rookie. Um, but it's all on him. You know, DeAndre Hopkins is right, and he's been on good teams and bad teams. He knows mm-hmm. kind of what it looks like and what it smells like. Uh, and they have rebuilt this team. Their defense will be very good this year. Yeah, they added Snead. Yeah, they just got Snead, of course, in that right. deal with uh, Kansas City. Uh, to me, you know, that division is ripe for a lot of teams to compete for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Ooh. the Texans got it. That's it. But, but is that, now, it? Is that but, it? Period. I can't say period. Here's why. No I, soup for you. I can't say period. <laughs> and here's why. We all talk about the great year. And rightfully so that C.J. Stroud had as Rookie of the Year and the amazing turnaround that they had in Houston. And to be fair, they were riddled with injuries, especially on offense you know, towards the end of the year. But it isn't like, you know, we're kind of like we become revisionist historians. The Texans didn't win 13 games last year and run away with the division. Lost to the Jaguars. You know, the Colts were eligible to win the division with two games to go, right? And Anthony Richardson didn't play. From week three on, they'd guard your Minshew, right? Yeah. Uh, so all of a sudden, you now have a, t- a, a division that's got multiple teams that are talented enough to fight for the division. I'm just not going to hand it to Houston because yeah, they had a great year. I'm not. Why not? No. I'm not. Yeah, but did you watch C.J. Stroud? Yes, did I did. Did you watch did you the watch Texans? Him? Did you watch him as he progressed through the season and became more and more comfortable? Are you not confident that he's going to continue down that trend to with or, more confidence next year? They're like, the favorite to win the division, but, but it's not over. They're the favorite to go to AFC Championship. It's not what are you over. talking about? Is I got to go to the AFC Championship. I want to be clear. What C.J. Stroud and the Texans did last year was awesome. And somewhat unprecedented, rookie quarterback, all that stuff, and sure. wins a playoff game, and we love it. And it's a great story, and I assume the kid's going to get even better in year two. That's my expectation. Mm-hmm. But I'm not just handing the Texans the division because of what happened last year, because here's the reality. Everybody else, other than Jacksonville, to be fair, got better. They got better. So you're not sweeping the division. Sure. I can guarantee you that. But they so, don't win it. I don't know that they are. They just I think got it's a Joe fight. Mixon. They reached out their defense. And I was we'll talking see. a little Wayne about this the other day. Don't. Oh, okay. Name drop. <laughs> don't. You guys are sleeping on the Titans. And I think you're making a terrible mistake if you don't think the Tennessee Titans can win that division. What did, what did Lil Wayne say about the Titans? He agreed with yeah. me. He agreed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, tell uh, some choice words that they don't know what the heck they're talking about <laughs> if okay. they're sleeping on the Titans. Okay. Yeah, pass me a pillow. I'm By the way, Lil Wayne will be here next week. He's performing with Drake uh, at the Prudential Center in Newark next week. I'll be there too. So uh, he'll be here. 
Of course. No, okay. Yeah. Like, it's right. it's in Jersey for Christ. We, of course, it's all right. We get that. Of course, I'm gonna yeah. be there. I'll be there to too. Go. I mean, Victor's popular. We <laughs> I all get. Go. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have to. It's part of my New Jersey duty. Oh, my <laughs> New Jersey duties. Uh, <laughs> New Jersey. He does have New we'll Jersey duties. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Coming up, uh, we've got the latest on the uh, Prince, uh, clown prince of the NBA, Draymond Green. Uh, he didn't speak after the game. He spoke after after the game on his own podcast, of course, because that's the way it goes these days. And we've got a little update on our New York Knickerbockers, plus some more football coming your way right after this. Welcome back to the Carton Show. Do you remember Draymond Green earlier this week got ejected from the game four minutes in in Orlando? Well, guess what? Draymond Green was the guest on the Draymond Green oh, Show, oh, and he explained <laughs> the incident. Here he is. Back to uh, getting kicked out the game. It just can't happen. I, I said what I said. I deserve to get kicked out at that point. We'll and what I good. said, if I'm all the way honest with y'all, I kind of was trying to turn my body and angle and go to the bench. And I said what I said, like a little too soon <laughs> before angling my body to the bench. Um, but yeah, it just can't happen. Uh, what do you, what do you that's think about, great. What do you think about the explanation? Yeah, it just, no, no bleep. It just can't happen. But you're the guy doing it. Yeah. You know, so it's not like you know, you tell your kids, listen, you know, Billy, that just can't happen. You gotta blah, that that behavior is unacceptable, right? If you're a Cologne, if you're a Cruz, Carton, Jacoby, whatever it is, right? He's the guy doing it, and this is the problem that that's accepted. Steve Kerr is going to do nothing about it. The war is going to do nothing about it. I'm sure the NBA is, you know, pulling their hair out uh, about him every single time he takes the court. What's this clown going to do next? But that's not an acceptable response to it. First off, he blew off the media after the game because that's the, you know, the new wave of athletes today. I'm not going to talk to the media. Let them do their jobs. I'm going to save all my comments for my own podcast. All right, all well and good. But he doesn't take ownership. He doesn't apologize. He doesn't acknowledge that it could have cost his team a significant game trying to you know, get in to that final a playing spot. And he just blows it off because he doesn't take it seriously. He doesn't give a rat's ass what anybody thinks about him. And while there's times I appreciate that type of mentality, go be you. When being you is detrimental to your team's overall success yeah. or attempts to be successful, you are the problem. He went on to say in that podcast, because I heard you know, the highlights of it, you know, that that kind of behavior needs to be the exception, not the norm. Well, guess what, clown? Mm -hmm. It's the norm. It's not the exception. So I'm done with Draymond Green. It's, a, it's, it's such wasted breath talking about a guy that had he kept his head on straight and maybe gotten the therapeutic help he clearly needs or the mental health help he clearly needs, you're talking about a potential Hall of Famer. Yeah. One of the great defensive players in the game in his era. But that's not what I think of when I think of Draymond Green. I also don't even think about the championships when you bring up the name Draymond Green. I think about a guy who thinks he's the most important human being on the planet. The other nine planets revolve around him. The sun revolves around him. The moon revolves around him. And I'm just going to be me. Because the Warriors have allowed it. This is where, I know there's a dumb report out there from a guy desperate for clicks that people are now questioning Steph Curry's leadership. It's pretty stupid. That's stupid. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's but funny. you can question Steve Curry's leadership as the head coach because he permits it. Yeah, listen, I, listen, the other night you saw Steph on Curry kind of whelp up in tears, right? Because he's realizing with the regression of Clay tears? Thompson. He was, he was tears? pissed. He was pissed. Yeah, it's frustration because, listen, he was upset, he's watching the regression of Clay Thompson. He can no longer control Draymond Green. If you go to that clip, Curry's tapping Dre like cool off. And for the fact that, listen, this man has 19 career uh, in season, in season uh, ejections, right? That's a lot from a ball player standpoint. The fact that you're not afraid at that point to be injected, like usually if you, he's been injected four times times in one season. The fact that it's something eternally does say, hey, man, I need to chill out. That means yourself. Look, I think Draymond Green's bipolar, and I think when the voices in, head, in his head start talking, he can't turn he them off. Goes. And you, I think that's what think it is. His, uh, uh, you think it's beyond repair? Do you think his legacy is already will be defined I think by these actions? I think it depends who you ask. You know, there's some guys out there, you know, like we all love basketball, depending on who you root for and kind of 
where you come from and how you view these antics. I'm sure there are people out there that have no problem with it, find it cute, think, oh, that's who Draymond is, yeah. and you'll then start, they'll make comparisons to, for lack of a better name, like a Dennis Rodman. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but this guy is now, he's a distraction. By the way, they're not the number one seed. Nope. Where, oh, it's cute, it's Draymond. Yeah, and they're winning games. This is a team that's a game away from not being in the postseason. And I know they won that game against the Orlando Magic, and he's not being suspended for it because, God forbid, you know, you make him sit out again and really teach him a lesson. God forbid Steve Kerr actually does something as the head coach to reel this thing in, but hes they're barely in the playoffs right now. I think that's the difference from years prior when he was doing this and getting ejected was they were the number one team. They were blowing mm -hmm. teams out, and it was cute to what right. you said earlier, but now it's different because they're just nibbling to get into the playoffs. One, one of my problems about what he just said was it didn't sound like he was taking accountability for Correct. his actions or Correct. saying what he would do differently. It sounds like if you said, hey, Draymond, what would you do differently? He'd be like, oh, I would turn my shoulders a little bit this way. You and know what I mean? That's, it, that's literally right, what he said. Was, yeah. He didn't say, like, I can't do that to my team. No. I can't treat the refs like like that. I can't let my emotions take over. He would just say, oh, I, I should have turned and a little think about bit this. this way before I said You know, it. pro sports is uh, right with, you know, curse words, bad words, offensive words, right? Sure. That's, but that's, it's, it's fine in the course of competing against it's other bad. men, right? Yeah. For the NBA, for the official who spoke after the game to the pool reporter to come out and say, and this is a quote, egregious profanity. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not like an F you or MF this egregious profanity. There's levels. There's and magical words. Yeah, like, exactly. There's magical words. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not Kelly Oubre calling everybody a bitch. Right. All right? <laughs> that's, that times 100, yeah. and he couldn't stop. And that's why Steph Curry's pissed. We're four minutes into a game. Dude, you made your point. That we need. We got but a you... technical foul. I need you on the court. We're not a very good basketball team Correct. right now. And you just decided, because this is what you do, to stop, not stop running your mouth and get yourself kicked out because it's always about you. Mm -hmm. What about the other 11 guys who give a rat's ass and want to be in the postseason? But to your point, Craig, refs get cussed out every night. Yeah. This, but yes. they, they've built the callus against the assault. So he had to cuss so bad. He must have been talking about his mama, his grandmama, what he would do to his mama and grandmama. Something. What the mother effers on top of that. So, right. I mean, that's hostile talk. Yeah, yeah you egregious can, and you can profanity. See, you can see what he said. If you if you're a, 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 talk about it, Vic, if you're a mouth reader <laughs> on there when he said it, uh, it was it was egregious. What was yeah. the first letter? It started with a P. Yeah, it did. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what it is. Pancakes. Pancakes. Moving on. Pancakes. <laughs> moving on to some other elbow. NBA <laughs> action. Guys, huge win for the Knicks last night. Although they didn't play. That's right. The Bucks That's lost. Right. That's the right. The Knicks are just right there. That's right. right. One game and a half behind oh. the Bucks in the two seed. But, Craig, looking at this, mm -hmm. if you're the Knicks, do you even want the two seed? Yes. Because that means you're going to end up playing the Heat the Sixers. I want the Heat I in want the, the first Sixers. round. I want all that Jimmy Butler smoke because mm. they knocked me out last year. Mm. And they stink. And I am not afraid of the Miami Heat and Spolster and Pat Riley coming into town. Matter of fact, I demand that yeah. we get the Miami Heat. I'm done with Cleveland. They're beneath me. And we're, we live rent-free in their heads anyway. And they don't have the goods to beat me. I want the Heat so badly because I can't lose. That's a sweep is what that is I, in the first round. I Remember, disagree. this okay. stage yeah, of the I game. I completely disagree. I think we win. I think we win. Oh, I think we win. Oh, oh, are oh, you oh. afraid of the Heat? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Stay on the porch. I'm really surprised you didn't pick Philadelphia because nobody knows what type of condition Embiid's knee is going to be. Yeah, like, not good. Right. And it'll be rusty at the end. And it'll be rusty. And you talk about them just losing to the Clippers. They can't hold on to leads. Listen. Number two seed, home court advantage in every round except for the Eastern Conference Finals, assuming Boston, of course, yep. makes the run, which I think we all agree they're going to, to the Eastern Conference Finals. If you gave me Philly, i slurped that up too. Jeez. But I've got, I, I I've got, I every day. I've got revenge What's on that, yeah. my mind. Yeah. And last year, the Miami Heat knocked me out uh, from a chance to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I want to give it back to them. I'm with you. Give me my out. I'm with you on the Heat smoke. No. I'm ready for all of that. No, I'm for no. I'm, Dude, I'm with you. I'm to go. No, 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 no. Is you act like we're, we're showing up with a full, healthy roster. Yeah, and also, Eric Spolster is the best that, coach that in the National Basketball Association. I... 
Tibbs, Tibbs against Spolstra. I'm taking Spolstra. Doesn't work out well. In a seven-game series? Come on. I'm taking Spolstra. What are you guys afraid of? I'm not afraid of the Miami Heat. They're not the Heat. They're not the Heat. This is not the same Heat team. This isn't the Heat team that has a chance to win a title. Oh, he's out with an elbow. Mitchell just got back. We don't have Randall. Right now, we're leading. We're leaning on Jalen Brunson, who we have to see in the playoffs. Does he have another gear? Can he carry the team like Jimmy B carried Heat? Just because it says Heat on the jersey doesn't mean they're the you know the late '90s Heat or a championship team. That's an average at best basketball that team. Beat the and I'm not afraid here in court. the playoffs. It's a different team. We're a better team. They're not as good. I want every bit of that smoke. Yeah, I'm afraid. Sisters. And if you're afraid, stay on the porch or buy yourself a dog. They were in the finals right? last season, uh, right? So what? They weren't what? very good. That's not a good basketball team. They beat team. the Knicks. That's not a good basketball not team. This year. And if you're afraid of them because it says heat year. on the jersey, We're not afraid of heat. then I don't want you in the garden. Are. Stay away from 33rd and 7th, all right? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. I don't want the heat. I'm a Knicks fan. Wouldn't you rather but play I the Pacers? The easiest road wouldn't you the rather play the Pacers than the Heat? Uh, it's not an option of the Pacers. It's yeah, an option right now yeah, of Philadelphia or Miami. Right. I don't know. If you're the two seed, but if you stay the three seed, then you play the Pacers. Why would I want a lesser seed? I'm about to win. No, you want you want to win. I don't want. I don't want to play games of be the three seed. I want home court advantage. I, whoever seven is, bring it. Bring come it. to me. You come to my house. Right. You come to my house. <laughs> and like I'm afraid <laughs> of a seven seed. I tell you what. I don't care if it's Philly or Miami. That's a four game sweep. Get the Mark Jackson brooms back out because we are not losing a game in the first round. Yeah. Bring it on. Seven seed. I'm afraid of a seven seed. Yeah, I've see. never been afraid of a seven seed in down. my life. When I'm, we, we, I'm going Greg back. I'm going to get a drink. We now. have Caleb Where's Williams, my future head coach, <laughs> on Caleb Williams with some interesting information. He's confident about Caleb. We'll tell you why. Right after this. <laughs> I'm still here. Take a break. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the Carton Show. Friday morning, you have your early morning headlines, and it is no secret that the Bears quarterback will be Caleb Williams after he gets picked number one in the draft. Head coach of the Bears, Matt Eberflus, has some praise for his future quarterback. As we said, quote, what I love to see was the interaction with the other players. You could certainly see those players love him and respect him and what he's brought to that program. You could see his character, his football character there. Can Caleb Williams lead the Bears to success? Well, potentially the playoffs in year one. Those are two different things. Um, so, yes, to answer the question, but I got to back the truck up on that because that's bogus right there. What is because it? you can't tell me uh, the character and culture of Caleb Williams in the locker room and how the guys adore him and like, run through fire for him and all the things that uh, Iberflus, uh is talking about there for one simple reason. If that's the kind of kid you are, where you're a great leader of, of men, young men in this case, yep. in college and men obviously in the NFL, that means you never waver in that leadership. It means you never waver in being part of that team, which you guys can speak to, whether it's Hofstra, UMass, Giants, Steelers, and Jets. That's a team, and that team by proxy becomes a family. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like that, you don't win. It's pretty simple, right? right. So I don't buy that. And the, the reason I don't buy that and the only knock I have, because I do think he's the best quarterback, they're clearly taking him, and I do think they can have success, and I do think they can make the playoffs. So let me just answer that right there, okay? Good job, good job. Here's what I don't like about Caleb Williams and the notion that guys want to fight with him and for him. When you make a decision not to play in, I think it was the Holiday Bowl, this past year, you're not that guy. Yeah. And... Those are his numbers in the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> They're all zeros the fact that because we that up he crazy. chose not to play. Yeah. And I know that I know there's a lot of young kids who are coming out of the draft who are guaranteed to be f picked first couple rounds yep. who don't want to risk a potential devastating injury that derails an NFL career. So I do understand the mindset, but I also hate it because you show me a 20-year-old kid that doesn't want to play more or compete more or pay off all the hard work, all the blood, the sweat, the tears, the hours, the learning, the practice, and the payoff to that is a bowl game. Now, it may not be for a championship in this particular year, which it wasn't for him, but that's the payoff. That's the final opportunity for the family to be together and compete. So I understand Ibrahim is not trying to build him up 
for those Bears fans that may not want him to be picked, which is crazy. That's the obvious pick. But he has to now earn that with the Chicago Bears locker room. And if I'm a guy on the Bears, that's the first thing I question. Why didn't you play in that bowl game? Because you didn't have your brother's backs by not playing in that bowl game. And I hate it when these kids do that. And after an entire year, or in this case, you know, two years, three years, four years, or eight years in college, when you walk away from the payoff of all the hard work and you leave your brothers and your family in the lurch, I lose respect for you. And I have with him. And I want to be clear. I'm sure he's a nice kid. Yep. I think he's going to be successful in the NFL. I think the Bears are going to compete for a playoff berth this year. But don't tell me he's the type of guy the other players rally around because when he had a chance to do that in a bowl game, he was selfish and decided not to play. Yeah, listen, I think when you're projected to get drafted as high as he is going to get drafted, it's a business decision. You also got to understand, Drake May and Jane Daniels both didn't play in it, right? They didn't I, play in their I say, I want to be clear. I, I say the same thing about them. And Joey so at, at this point, if you look at if you look at Caleb Williams right now, the, I watched what he did in his pro day. He threw, right? He was there for Brendan Rice. He was there for those guys that needed yeah. him to make those yeah. throws. Also so, didn't do anything at the, at the combine. Either, right. right. And so with all that said, I do think he's a team first guy. I think he gets a lot of credit, uh, discredit for because he may be a little eccentric. But overall, man, you put on the tape. The kid is a generational talent. And I want to be clear. That's this all is that not matters. about the talent. I think he's the obvious number one pick. I think he's a generational talent. I think the Bears are very lucky. They have an opportunity to draft him. I think he will have immediate success. And I'm the only guy telling you, I think the Bears are alive for a playoff berth come December. I think he's that good. And they've done a good job building a much better team than they did for Justin Fields. It's my own little bugaboo. Don't tell me that he commands respect and the guys want to fight for him when you blow off a bowl game. And I say it about Drake May, and I'll say it about any other kid that decides a, I'm not playing in a bowl game. It's also not new for guys, for quarterbacks, right. to not play in bowl games, right? They all preserve themselves. They're all getting ready for the drafts. And in my opinion, to be honest, I think NIL is just ruining all of it, too. Like, these guys got millions of dollars already. They're not tripping about yeah, a bowl point. game. They're not tripping about being around their teammates. But what all that. They don't care yeah, that much anymore. But, Vic, at the end of the day, like, he goes out there and gets hurt. He's not the number one pick. Correct. Bottom Super line. Simple. So he, you, you talking about top five? He's projected number one. He's losing he, money in his pocket. Right. I mean, so he's like, what am I getting from that? A catastrophic injury, and these guys all have insurance as well. Uh, going into a ball True. game, it's just the look of it. And here's the thing for me, and maybe this is kind of me romanticizing sports a little bit, and if that's what you guys accuse me of. I'll eat that. Oh, I have no problem with that. But like you don't even when, think that way. when you're when you're a teenager or in your twenties. And sports is everything to you. And you're blessed with the opportunity to play and compete, right? And you decide not to. Like, I don't, maybe it's me. My brain can't process a 20 year old kid saying no to another opportunity to play and to compete. I don't get that. He's competed all his career. He had but that's what you, touchdowns look, through over 2,000 yards. Every former athlete that I've become friends with or I've ever interviewed, you guys all say one thing in common, and I don't care if you're black, white, basketball, football, hockey, it doesn't matter. The one commonality every former pro athlete has when I ask you guys the question, what do you miss the most? It's two answers. It's the camaraderie of the guys in the locker room, right? And that's not a P. Diddy joke. All right, number one. All right. <laughs> and number two, it's the ability to compete. Correct. You guys can't find another way to compete at that same type of level. Correct. So if that's what you miss the most. How could you walk away from yeah, it? Yeah, but it comes to context. He, this man has a big, bright future after uh, USC. Like, so at the end of the day, he's part, you, you said it right now. If he gets drafted, well, it's most likely he's going to go to the Bears. Yeah. You're talking about playoff berth, right? This I Bear so. hasn't been to the playoffs in forever. Yeah. So, if you're talking about him being an addition to the Bears and going to the playoffs, why wouldn't he preserve himself so he can be the best? Just yes, remember, put that full screen up again, please, Neil. What were his numbers in the Holiday Bowl? And it, there you go. Yeah. That's what he did in the Holiday Bowl. But he looked great in a T-shirt with pink fingernails. Fantastic. I want to talk about the fingernails because he had the pink fingernails, the pink phone, potentially some lip gloss when he was at the yeah. USC tournament game. And he came under fire because of that. But, however, <laughs> he has now addressed it. He has addressed the criticism of the pinkness at yeah. the game That's with the head cool. knocking. And I love it. This I love from him. Let's listen to his response to the criticism. Let's see what that phone looks like. What the phone looks like? Let's see what color the phone is. The wallet white. The wallet white. 
Phone, phone is pink. Case is clear. What the fuck is that? Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your, your girl love them. Oh, oh, did he say your girl loves him? Yes, he did. Or the girls love him? Your Doesn't girl matter. loves him. Well, then Doesn't you matter. tell my girl, get back inside the house. <laughs> uh, uh, look, I think we make a, a lot about that. And there's a level of, uh, of some homophobia out there when it comes sure. to a football player having pink fingernails or mm -hmm. your TV show host having them as well. Um, <laughs> and it's silly. It's stupid. Yeah. That has absolutely nothing to do with who the kid is or whether or not that kid can play football. And I think he's now playing into it. I like it. Because here's a kid. They all live on social media. He knows. Look, if the biggest knock on Caleb Williams is that he likes the color pink, I'm good with Caleb Williams. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And then also, right. he explained the reason he wore he painted his nails is a, kind of a tribute to his mom. She was a nail technician. There so, you go. Right, so now, for me, Solidary. I was like, you're good. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and that's also way, what the kids are doing. Now. We have yeah. all yeah. been yeah. in Kobe's a position doing. where we accidentally over... No. You know, overdo <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the lip the you, lips. You pops? Right? I'm just saying... We've all, we've all been in that spot, you know. Yeah, that's a lot. Where, You're getting where, crazy. Where we accidentally, <laughs> like you said, Jacoby, you can't put the Carmex back in you the can't. jar. You can't. Somebody put it on your face. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Huh? Put it on your face. Huh? Give me the heebie-jeebies <laughs> right now. Getting big heebie-jeebies like right now. Uh, I like it. Uh, <laughs> moving on to our second headline, and this is also has to do with college quarterbacks. This time it is Jay Daniels, who recently had his pro day. And his LSU head coach, Brian Kelly, was at the pro day. And Brian <laughs> Kelly was um, asked about Jaden by some reporters. And he said something he was not supposed to. Let's listen uh -oh. to Brian Kelly from the pro day. He, he is going to be so committed to oh. taking care of himself um, that you don't have to worry about size or he doesn't weigh enough. Uh, Lamar's done a pretty good job with his size. I think uh, Mahomes, I wouldn't consider him a giant because he's going to get the ball out to the playmakers and, and make plays uh, for Washington. What? What? Oh. What? Oh. Did, did, what? Brian, did Brian Kelly just say for, for Washington? For, for, for right, so much to unpack in that. First <laughs> off, let me just get the car off my lips, all right? Because yeah. Willie's upset, upset with me. Um, first off, all right, so we know the top two picks. Top two picks are locked now. in. Locked. Um, do we have the picture of the elbow, though? I got to make sure that oh, Washington, yeah, yeah, sure. I gotta make sure that Washington knows what, what they're getting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, he does have a penis elbowitis. So, <laughs> assuming <laughs> that can be cured and it doesn't impact his throwing, yeah. they're getting, obviously, a very good quarterback. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is, where did the Southern accent go? Oh, it's right. Oh, yeah, oh wait. No, what Craig is referring to is when Brian Kelly was announced <laughs> as the LSU head coach. Brian Kelly from Boston, this is what he sounded like. It's a great night to be a Tiger. I'm here with my family, and we are so excited to be in the great state of Louisiana, but more importantly, to be with you great fans. I'm here with my family, my family. and I just want to let Baton Rouge know that when it comes to alligator, I like it. I like it a lot. And my family has always been big fans of Louisiana. So thank you for welcoming my family to this wonderful campus here at LSU. Now, fast forward uh, two years. I really think that he's going to be the starting quarterback of the Washington Commodores. And they're getting a really good kid. Yeah, Bob, anyway. Uh, look, uh, maybe he does know something. He, he turned into um, Steve Spurrier. Something, yeah. right? Something Bobby Bowden. Like, it wouldn't, <laughs> look, it wouldn't be shocking. He is one of those four quarterbacks that are going to go first, right? And if Caleb does go to Chicago, which he clearly is, you know, this is now, this is the poker game. Right, this is the risk because you saw last year Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud and the terrible mistake Carolina made in not taking C.J. Stroud for little Bryce Young. And now you've got three guys, uh, him, Drake May, and, of course, J.J. McCarthy. Penix further down the line than those guys. Mm -hmm. And someone's going to be right, someone's going to be wrong. Yeah. Uh, but your entire next decade of your franchise rests on getting this pick right. Yeah, listen, I, I like Jalen Day. The only issue is he's probably only 180 pounds wet, so he's going to have to right. up. But right. at the day, you know, if you're Dan Quinn, you also have to be pissed off because this <coughs> could be true. You just exposed me, right? Because Brian Callahan knows uh, Dan Quinn, and it's, 
Brian and Kelly, excuse me, uh, they, they, they know each other. Yeah. So if you have a private conversation yeah. and now you drop that, you're like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, the whole part of the draft is smoke screens and, and misdirections and, and not Correct. letting people see well, your hand. Except for one thing on this. All right, so Caleb Williams is going to Chicago. Right. So let me, it's kind of like the Harbaugh line. If you're Washington, you essentially have the first pick outside of Caleb Williams being in this draft. Exactly. So if he reveals who you're taking, unless you are legitimately going to consider moving down a spot or two to get like a third or fourth round extra pick, which in theory which they you could. could. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This isn't like, hey, we know exactly what the Giants are doing at six. It almost doesn't matter uh, who they like as the next best quarterback because they're picking next. So they have the right to do whatever they want. It's so almost, it's a little different. It's almost outside. easy. I don't want to say easy because you want to make the right choice as yeah. a scout and as a GM, right? But it's it's a tough decision to make. But you got five guys to choose from as opposed yeah. to 35 now, that could be first. I will, first I will kind of revert back to what Willie said. And this is an issue. As I have told this story many times in the show, the Frank Reich, who obviously turned out to be a lousy head coach, uh, but was a quarterback whisperer uh, for a lot of people, uh, has, has told me when we were stranded on an island together once that when it comes to NFL quarterbacks, the thing he looks for first and foremost is not the arm, it's the trunk. Yeah. He wants a big ass, big legged uh, quarterback oh, there because you go. the he's NFL. Not pick, he's not picking Jim. And that's so go. your point of yeah. the kids, he played at a buck 85. He's, I looked yeah, it up. He's really skilled. A buck 85 in the NFL quarterback gets you killed right now. Legit. You, you have your got, receivers are bigger than you. Yes. Yeah. So he's going to obviously have to put some weight on and get that dad bod like Mahomes has built yeah. over the last couple <laughs> years. But that right. is a very good he also, point. He also some runs a lot and takes hits. Yeah, some quarterback wow. coaches, I'm, I'm just telling you what Frank said to me years ago. Straight they on. want this. They want thickness. They want big, thick legs, big, thick ass. Because you have to assume everybody can throw the ball. Yeah. When, if you're going to be drafted, right? Well, so it's not about the throwing the ball. It's can you survive yeah. the physicality of the NFL? And I will say this. At a buck 85, you can't. I think he comes in. I think by the time he suits up and plays an NFL game, he'll be somewhere around 195, almost 200 pounds. Okay. So, I mean, that would be a much different physique. Correct. No, he needs to be 250 pounds. They don't have an offensive line. 250? Yeah. They don't have an offensive <laughs> line. They don't have a running back. <laughs> they don't have a tight end. They're going to be running for his life. He's going to die in Washington. What are you talking about? <laughs> did, did, he see, did he see Sam Howell? Sam Howell got sacked six that times a game. That man was spending the whole year. season at the buffet table. What are you talking about? <laughs> he needs to be Derrick Henry. You're right. <laughs> well, uh, at least the kid got drafted. <laughs> So if he does go number two to Washington, then then the draft gets really interesting. Like if Kelly is right, and you take Caleb off the table, you take him off the table. Now it comes down to made in New England. Is JJ McCarthy yeah, really going to be the third quarterback taken in this draft? And is there a team like your New York Giants who covered him so much they willing to do something almost stupid to get up to three to take him? Or is New England sitting there going? We ain't talking to anybody yeah. because we're going to get J.J. McCarthy at three. Yeah. Unless, of course, you believe some of the smoke that's been out there that Washington likes him too. But if Kelly gave it away, I could tell you what just happened in New England. Whoo! Mm -hmm. oh, really? Yes. Yeah, assuming they love J.J. McCarthy. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. like or McCarthy's Drake their guy. They would be there as well. Or Drake yeah. Man. All right, the Drake on. May thing concerns me because of what Willie brought up. There's two ACL tears. Dude couldn't stay healthy in college. Right. So I'm going to now put $40 million bucks into this kid. Moving Maybe on not. to the NBA, the Western Conference plan is much more interesting than the top of the conference as we head down the stretch. When you look at the standings, there is Steph Curry who could potentially get overtaken by Jalen Green and the Rockets. LeBron seems like he's in. The Suns could overtake the Mavericks. When you see all of this... Can you see a world in which the Warriors are not in the playoffs? Yeah. The Warriors? Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, it's what we've yeah, talked sure. about for weeks now. <laughs> if the Rockets keep winning. They won 10 in a row. Yeah, if the Rockets keep winning, the Rockets are going to get the 10 seed. And I know that there's, uh, there's some big games coming up next week, of course, and then to the second week of April. But, yeah, it's real. Yeah. It's real because, look, when you play 72 games, and you're a couple games or four or five games over 500. Yeah, I know it's the old Bill Parcells line, but he's right. Like, that's what you are. Yep. A little bit better than 500. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're beatable. Mm -hmm. Your know, team could come up and grab you. And the Rockets, I know a lot of people don't watch Rockets basketball, understandably so. Yeah. But this is a young team. This is an athletic team. Yeah. This is a team that runs 94 feet up and down the court. And they found something here in the last month or so of the NBA season. And Golden State, for all their greatness, 
and guys going to the Hall of Fame and all the championships and Steph Curry and all that, they look like an old team. Yep. They don't get up and down the court great. Now, you, you put Steph Curry in a half-court set, coming off screens. My money's always on Steph all Curry, that. right? Because he's the greatest shooter in the history of basketball. But collectively, Houston runs them out of the gym if they face each other and head-to-head. Jalen Green is on an absolute yeah. leader he's in the hair. month of March. He's, like he's shooting 42% in the month, month of yep. March. His last three games, he scored, like I don't know, like 27 and 44 and oh, 35. Like he has proven to be – he's taking like a little bit of like an Anthony Edwards-like superstar leap mm-hmm. and putting the team on his back. Sengun, their second best player. He's out. He's out. He's, he's out. out. And all of a sudden, they've won 10 in a row. Like, And one thing I do want to say about this, that this has not been mentioned – Ime Udoka is the coach there. And remember what he did his first year with the Celtics. Oh, yeah. And we all know what happened after that first year. But this feels like the Celtics year. They start poorly, and then Ime just slowly turns the team around, Mm -hmm. and they get hot down the stretch. Does the Rockets owner have a hot wife? Um, Do we know the answer to that question? We just, we Tillman? Just, Tillman? Uh, we just Tillman make, Tina? Let's just make sure he doesn't because oh. that could be a problem. Someone Google Tillman Fertitta <laughs> <Tina's> wife. <laughs> <laughs> that might become a problem. No, but you make a point, Jac- uh, Jacoby. The Rockets, one thing, they're not afraid of Golden State, too. That's the thing. Like, yeah. If you look at Tyler, you see he tweeted, Warriors, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, they want the Warriors. They want the they want they're the old. They, they don't have the rhythm like they were. They, they are beatable. Uh, what's crazy about the Warriors, too, they look like they're tired, yeah. right? There's yes. a different, like, this team has it in and they're on the hunt. The Warriors who watch them play, they're like, man, we can't wait till this is over. We want somebody to put us out of our business. <laughs> it's funny, too, because I used to, I was kind of hating on the playing games and all of that when it first Love it. But this is incredible. Like, we're getting really high level basketball. Teams at the bottom of the, uh, of the standings here get an opportunity to knock a team out, to get into the playoffs, and to earn their yep. way in. I kind of like that. And, and I can tell you, when we do have that, uh, the opening uh, games for the playing tournament out west specifically, uh, that becomes must-see TV. Imagine the Bromber Steph in a, yeah. in a winner go home game. It's must-see TV. Yeah, and this if is the thing. Plays. You know, the players were against us when they first announced it. They've all adopted now and love it because the fans love it as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. You have four of the top ten most notable, marketable stars in the league for the last couple decades that are all going to be vying <clears throat> in a one-and-done situation, most likely, mm-hmm. to get in for the right to then be waxed. By the Nuggets, the T-Wolves, or Oklahoma City. So, yeah. much more basketball coming your way. And Tim Hardaway will be a part of it, of course, when Timmy. we get into the NBA yeah. playoffs. Uh, while we're talking about teams that are probably not winning a championship in basketball, how about a football team that's not winning a championship? The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> so, if they don't get to an NFC championship game, how many people are going to have their resumes on LinkedIn updated, <laughs> ready to go for a new gig? We're going around the diamond. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Yankees won yesterday. Look at this Damn play. Right. Some are saying that this is a bad throw that just happened to get the runner out. That's I'm saying it's a game-saving laser from Soto. Well, look, right. it's, it's, uh, and look, it's a one-hop right to the dish. Uh, that would have tied the game for Houston right there. And Soto came up big. Is it the greatest throw of all time? No. So what? He made the throw in the spot. And when people talk about Soto, they talk about his bat and his offense. Yep. They don't talk a lot about his arm. And uh, that saved them from tying the game. Look, the Yankees left a million guys on base yesterday, had ample opportunity to blow the game wide open, and couldn't get a really big clutch hit. Uh, and they found a way to win. Yep. Down four after two, fought all the way back, and the New York Yankees are the best team in Craig, baseball record-wise. Can I ask a follow-up question? <laughs> yeah. Are they going to go 162-0 no, this now, year? I'm glad you asked that question because today is always the day where there's some jackass on TV or radio that goes, you know, um, so-and-so is on pace to hit 162 home runs. You know, oh, you know, Mike Trout hit a, hit a home run yesterday. Or the ERA. You know, he leads, and by the way, Mike Trout did hit a home run. I think it was the first home run of the season, wow. uh, right? I think it was the first inning of the game. Uh, nobody on, two outs, Trout, another meaningless solo home run. Yeah. Yep. And it was the same exact ending that the Angels have had his entire career. He hits a bomb, they get blown out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, that's Mike Trout's career. The greatest baseball player of the last decade who has how many postseason appearances? Zip. One. One. One in his entire career. Crazy. But the New York Yankees are 1-0, and, and that is for real. Which oh. brings us. Oh, I see oh, what you did there. I see what you did there. a little something we call for real or, or for gazy. All right, Willie Colon, here we go. The Dallas Cowboys will make the NFC Championship game next year. Is that for real yeah. 
or Fugazi? Uh, this is Fugazi. Uh, they suck, right? So th- this is the problem. <laughs> they are, they're a lesser team right now. Jerry has closed his checkbook. And if you're Dak Prescott, prepare to play somewhere else in 2025 because this team is prepared for a rebuild. Ooh. And right now, what you got to stand about Jerry right now, if you're looking at what he's doing, he's selling the rest of the team. Best of luck to you, right? Yeah. However it ends, it ends. But I want to make moves to get ready for this team. For, to are you to suggesting you. that the Denver Broncos are waiting a year to acquire Dak Prescott uh, on the open market? <laughs> Your take on it is what there, Victor Cruz? Big Fugazi. I'm really on this one. I just don't see a world where they contend at this level. They haven't made any adjustments on this roster. Yep. They haven't improved in any way. They've actually lost. They lost guys from last year. So I just don't see it. Yeah, it's also highly unlikely that they go undefeated yeah. at home again. Exactly. Because that's obviously very hard to do. And if you're a Giants fan like Victor is, it gives you a little wrinkle of hope Just a that while we're all chasing Philly in the East talent-wise, mm-hmm. maybe we're good enough to come in second. You never know. All right, number two, here we go. There should be a playoff mandate in Florham Park, New Jersey for the New York yeah. Jets. For real or for games? For real. You know what the bottom is, right? Shoot for the stars. At the end of the day, yeah. you have to get this team motivated to go into this season to win it all, even if you don't really believe it. You got Aaron Rodgers. You got enough pieces to be a high octane offense. You have to deliver. Playoffs a bust, bottom line. Yeah, I'm with this. This is for real. I think when you look at this team, they were a quarterback away, right? Last two years, they were a quarterback away. They got the defense. Now they added more talent on offense. Now it's up to Aaron Rodgers to put up or shut up. Can he go out there and put this team into the playoffs? Here's a quick little uh, question uh, before I get to number three here. Jacoby, you can start on this one. If you were a gambling man, and I don't think anyone here really is a gambler. Oh, yeah. uh, there you go. I asked the right guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who plays more games this year? Ooh. Aaron Rodgers or Saquon Barkley? Ooh. 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 Inquiring minds want to know. I'm going Aaron Rodgers. I'm with I, you as I well. After the season he had last year and the fact that he's rehabbing himself to be ready at yeah. the end of the season in case means he's coming in healthy and he's not going to make the same mistake he made last year which is holding on the ball too long. How many games did Saquon play last year? I oh, think all of them. Yeah. How many games did Aaron Rodgers play last year? Four points. Four yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just Four check points. it. Four points. Just check uh, it. You see that he's resting. Yeah, he's not resting. He's resting. He's resting. He's resting. Just remember, it's just me and you <laughs> versus got it, got it. Saquon right, and, and Shep. Right. By the way, Sir Shep will be here next week. All right, number three, here we go. Drafting J.J. McCarthy in the top five is an absolute mistake. For real or for Gazy? I'm going to go Fugazi. I what? believe in the young fella. 27-1, one, left the field as a national what? championship. All he has done is be able to deliver. Like, you talk about his run-first offense, that's what he was supposed to do. That's the way it was designed. That's right. In big moments, he made big throws. I've always liked him. I don't understand the knock on him. If anything, he's probably the most healthiest quarterback in this draft, by the way. I will so, say this. They also ran the most pro-set offense yeah. of all the kids that are coming out that are going to be drafted top five, mm-hmm. which may make him more prepared Early on mm-hmm. uh, in his rookie season. Yeah, I, I like him. So, I, I would I would definitely take a shot at him. No. Um, yeah, what do you – your quarterback – if you're the Giants, your quarterback has a neck roll on. Period. <laughs> I, I just never watched a Michigan game and said – God, J.J. McCarthy just – Then you didn't watch You didn't watch the college football playoffs. He was money in the – And you didn't watch the national championship game. In the national game, championship, the guys he was a money. winner. Yeah. The guys make – he, he can make every throw as an, no in question. the National Football League. I'm with Willie on this, and this is Fugazi. I think he's a guy that can make a difference on a football Top team. Five. Maybe not right away. I'm not saying he comes in and starts and, be the, and he's the guy, but he can definitely wait yeah. a year, learn, and come in and be successful. I can tell you this. Uh, there are times that there are people in the know who don't like to tell you that they're in the know. Victor Cruz has just announced that the New York Giants are drafting <laughs> J.J. McCarthy with Did I do the Brian Kelly thing? Did I do the Brian Kelly thing? Nice job there. there. Sorry, nice guys. job there. Appreciate you, John. All right, here's number four. Sorry, John. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers will win the AFC North this season. For real or for Gazy? For real? What are you talking about? Let's go. Uh, hey, go. by the way, why is it so sticky? Because my like, Carmex is on it. <laughs> this yeah. is. That's oh, no. I had a that's tough you night last night. Sticky <laughs> towel, oh, oh, that's the thing. Uh, wow, wow. Yeah, this is for real. I don't care even talk. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russell Wilson, you talk about new offensive coordinator. Our defense has always been top five. The bottom line is <laughs> Russell Wilson has to deliver. If he's able to do that, we're talking Super Bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, this uh, is for real. I've been, I've been saying it, guys. 
guys. I'm with you. If the Steelers get Russell Wilson, they win the division. They have that clip is somewhere up here. We're going to get back to yeah. it. Yeah. Happens, we, uh, if if anyone happens, we'll put probably play the clip of me saying it after you said it. <laughs> but Victor was the first guy to say it on this show. Uh, here's one for you. Uh, UConn won by 30 last night to get to the Elite Eight. Keep in mind. at San Diego back. State. There you go. So, uh, as a result of that, and they play Illinois coming up this weekend to get to the Final Four, UConn is the best college basketball program over the last decade. And here's some notable teams just to give you an idea of other teams that have had success. We went back 15 years to give you a real opportunity yep. to say no to it. But for real or for Gazy? Yeah, this is for Gazy. How about the Wildcats and Jalen yeah. Brunson's team? We, uh, we're talking about Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart and, Mike, and Mikael Bridges and Dante DiVincenzo. It's pretty much the Knicks, right? That's the Knicks. Uh, <laughs> those guys are Knicks. <laughs> no, yeah, this, this team right here sticks out to me in the last decade. This was a monster team. Uh, this is when I fell in love with Jalen Brunson. So, for me, Fugazi. Yeah, I think if they win it, it's an easier conversation. Yeah, that's what I'm anticipating. I'm thinking it's for real because if UConn does win it, they'll be uh, in that conversation. I think they're the most dominant team this year. I mean, they're just wiping teams off the And plane. I'll say, even the Villanova championship teams that we all have great respect yep. for, and Jay Wright, who's one of, of the great college coaches, Hofstra. who obviously was a Hofstra guy, uh, the reality is this. There has not been a team in a long time that blows people out Correct. in the tournament the way UConn is blowing people out. Correct. Like these, I, Look, I know it's San Diego State, and you could yeah. argue they've kind of had the Duke path to a Final Four. Mm -hmm. You're playing lesser competition. That doesn't mean anything to me. Because they're blowing everybody out. And they're doing it, as you said, like without one go-to superstar offensive yep. player. It's a mm -hmm. true team. I think Dan Hurley has really got this thing going. Jersey. And there is, I do want to say, I've seen it before. Blowout, 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 tight game loss. We've all yeah. seen that pattern. Yeah, yeah I, the problem is that you can't pick a team. And look, I know people fall in love with Purdue every single year and Edie and Eddie and all that. But if, this isn't like UNLV Duke. You know, 25 years yeah, ago. No. You know, there's no one, I think, that's got the offensive power that UConn has, including, you know, the teams that are still alive going into the weekend. Yeah. All right, I got one more thing. I can squeeze one more in for you here. Uh, for real or for Gazy, you ready? Okay. New York Knicks Center, Isaiah Hartenstein is black. For real <laughs> or for Gazy? Gazy. Uh, for real. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, man. That's the hardest one for him. <laughs> that is one Just be yeah. consistent. Um, yeah, I know my guy. He, does my not, guy. he does not appear to be African American. Yep. Um, he appears to be as white as I am. Yeah. But correct. apparently his dad is black. Yeah. yeah. And I guess his dad played some Pro Bowl in Germany, I think. Played for Oregon, knows. too. Yeah, played for Oregon. Yep. Um, yeah, he's black. He's invited to Kwanzaa is what he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Welcome but to Kwanzaa's here's, dinner. Here's there. the craziest thing about it. So this comes from the Roommates podcast with uh, you know Jalen Brunson and Josh Harder on the Knicks, obviously. And the funniest thing about it, is uh, has they're, they're both like, well, now that I know, <laughs> I'm not shaking your hand like this. Now it's like, what up? Love, 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 G. Juneteenth, you from the Juneteenth too. Yeah. It's like a bad key and peel bit. That's <laughs> what it is. When we this come consistent. back, That's we have some new information about team. who the Giants are looking at to draft, and it is surprising. A name has been associated with the Giants that we have not heard yet. We'll tell you who huh. it is. He right just told this. us it's JJ McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, breaking news. Uh, they're telling me, break. I apologize, Jacoby. Saquon Barkley has a hangnail, and he's out for the first month. He does not have penis elbow. The Dante DiVincenzo. Go, New York. Go, New York. Go. Go, New York. Go, New York. Go. We're going to Sizzler. Uh, here's 100 bucks. You guys can go without me. Sit down together, and man. You're so right, Jacoby. He's in. Oh, you're so right, baby. Come on. There is a quarterback competition in no, Pittsburgh, no, no. is there not? Don't we have producers on this show that are supposed to be in charge of what we talk about? No more excuses from the clowns that wear the uniform that says J-E-T-S. It's as if it's backyard football with a 10 Mississippi One, two, three, Ha, ha, ha.
I dropped it on purpose. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the uh, Carton Show. Always fun here. And great to have Victor Cruz, of course, Willie Colon, David Jacoby. And with that, I believe we have a little something we call First yeah, and yeah, Football. Yeah. First and Football. And we start with some new information about Brandon Ayuk's relationship with the 49ers. Uh-oh. And Uh-oh. guess what he did? He went on a podcast and he had some words about the contract situation between him and the Niners. And this is what he said. And I quote, I'm trying to get what I deserve. I feel like this season playing football, I figured out who I was as a person and a player, what I bring to the table. If they don't see the worth in that, that's all it is. How do you feel about Ayuk publicly putting on pressure for, to the Niners to sign him? Uh, it's, it's the world we live in. It's uh, his right to do it. He is going to make $14 million this year uh, playing for San Francisco. And I think it was only a couple days ago that both John Lynch and Kyle Shannon came out and said how much they value having him on the roster and how they can do everything they can to keep him around. You know, it, it's, it's very simple to me. I understand Brandon Ayuk in the position he's in. You know, you're going to what, your fifth year. Uh, you've not made a lot of money by comparison to other receivers, but you are getting a big number this year. Your first time making that type of money, 14 million bucks. Uh, and you also recognize that there are other guys who, frankly, you're better than, who are making a lot more money than you. Like if I'm Brandon Ayuk and I see Calvin Ridley get 50 million bucks, uh, yeah. like 41 guaranteed, mm-hmm. whatever the actual number was, I'm like, yo, yo, yo. Like, I'm better than that guy, Mm -hmm. right? So, I don't think this is him at war with San Francisco at all. I think this is the kind of, you know, new world we live in where everyone's got access to a microphone and a camera uh, and the ability to put stuff out there. And these players are going on podcasts left and right, which is absolutely their right to do it. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean to me that they're at odds at all. I'm sure he was asked the question, how do you feel about not getting the big extension? How do you feel about other guys that you're better than making more money than you? And he gave an honest answer. But at no point that I've heard has San Francisco come out and said, we don't value Brandon Ayuk or we don't want to pay Brandon Ayuk. You know, there are some guys every year that become casualties of the business of the sport. Sure. We saw it with Saquon Barkley here over the last two years. Yeah. And in the moment, that's where Brandon is. But I'm also convinced that Brandon Ayuk is going to play the next five years with the San Francisco 49ers, and they will figure out a way to pay him commensurate with his talent, how important he is to that offense, and he will be a Niner for a long time. No, I do think he's at odds with the organization from this standpoint. He understands he wants to strike while the iron's hot. He sure. has his biggest share. When you hear him say he knows who he is as a ball player, that means he's in tune with the offense. He finally feels like a factor. Overall, if you also look at him going into next season, like there's if, if Brock Purdy gets hurt, his production goes down. <coughs> so now he goes to sure. the table. His numbers aren't the same. So he goes, listen, we just left off of Super Bowl field, right? You talk about playing 21 games, having you know over 100 games with uh, you know eight receptions. So in the day when you look at what he does best right now, he's a producer. So he wants to get it wild skid because the rest of this uh, cap, the cap is ate up, right? And you also from the San Francisco 49ers standpoint, they're already paying Debo Samuels. They're paying CMC. Uh, you talk about Kittle. Between the two, uh, two receivers, they're not going to give him 28 to $30 million because you're not going to have $52 <coughs> million tied up between two receivers. So they're going to have to make a decision. Let him play out this last year, either move on, move on from him, or you have to cup somebody so you can add Yeah, but don't forget, and, and, and without getting too in the weeds on cap stuff because it bores the hell out of people, the reality is that you can uh, you know, redo guys' deals, restructure deals, and the San Francisco 49ers, I think better than anyone else in football, have proven that if you want to get a guy signed, you can get a guy signed. No matter how much the money is, you go to Christian McCaffrey, he restructures his deal, signing bonus versus roster bonus, you do it. Yeah. And I'd be, you know, when you put those numbers up, yeah. which is really important to look at, and how productive he is right there Very. with Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy ain't going anywhere. No, nope. right? No. But so he may be the I'm, highest paid in the league. Fair enough. If I'm Brandon Ayuk and I want to go out there and get my true value financially for my family and because, mm-hmm. look, I'm really good at what I do. I deserve to be compensated for it. Sometimes be careful what you wish for, right? Because if my numbers are Pro Bowl level numbers where Brock Purdy, and I know that Brock Purdy is going to be here for the next seven, eight years, why would I want to play with anybody else? A, I've got a great chance of going to a Super Bowl every year. 
B, I'm on the same page as this young quarterback who looks for me every single time he throws the football. I don't want to walk away from that. Let me explain why. Because I feel like if he plays out this last year, he's a free agent. The the market is going to be such that he's going to be offered much more money somewhere else. So then you end up with the classic question of, do I stay where I'm comfortable do I take a hometown discount to stay with a good team with a young quarterback who I have chemistry with, or do I take the extra $30 million to play for the Seahawks or whoever? I'm taking the money. But think yeah. about the market is going to be different because once Justin, uh, Justin Jefferson gets signed and Jamar Chase, whatever they is, he's going to ask for more to them because he's going to feel like he's that true number one. So he's looking for the bigger bag. And I hate to be this guy, but I have to. There's one aspect you cannot forget, and it sucks for you guys as players. If San Francisco wants to franchise him next yeah, year, they, they can. can. Yeah. So all the all this is smoke right now, and it's posturing. And I get it. You're negotiating publicly, mm-hmm. and you have every right to do that. But San Francisco can just sit back, pay you the 14 million bucks this year, and tell you, look, we have you over a barrel. We control your future, also have to be, and we'll franchise. They also have to be careful because they got a lot of guys that are that are getting longer in the tooth, that are making a lot of money, and mm-hmm. they're going to have to restructure. Some guys may not want to restructure. Then you're going to get rid of some guys, and that team starts to look different. And then and then you just want to be able to contend. You want that team to stay who they are, the core of that team, sure. so that they contend for Super Bowls year in and year out. And obviously the finances get in the way of that. Moving on to second and football, that involves Victor Cruz's New York Giants. Some really interesting news. They currently sit at sixth, yet they're having a private workout with Drake May. May is expected to be drafted <laughs> in one of the first three slots. Do you? Could you see a world in which the Giants move up to draft May? I do. I do. I do see a world where they do that. they got to make a splash. The offseason hasn't been great to them from a fan perspective, right? We lost our best player to the Philadelphia Eagles, our arch rivals, right? So they got to do something to regain the fan base. The Giants always love when the fans are in their favor, when they're doing things the right way, and when you take a guy like Drake May or maybe J.J. McCarthy, which is who I love, but bring those guys in and take a look at them and potentially trade up to draft them. you got to pay attention to it. It's got to be a splash. And – Put a little fire into Daniel Jones. He hasn't been great, obviously coming off an injury, but he hasn't been the guy. He hasn't really solidified his spot as the quarterback of this football team, and he may need a guy like Drake May or J.J. McCarthy to light a little fire under him to understand that if you mess up, if you're out there stinking it up in the first couple games of this season, we got a guy that's viable that can come in and do something special potentially. Look, if the Giants don't move draft position and they stay at six, they're not taking a quarterback. Uh, because they've got so many other problems on this team. True. And they wouldn't be getting the quarterback that uh, my gut tells me they want. I don't think they have any interest in Drake May. I think this is the posturing of uh, trying to throw some uh, flares to make other teams think that maybe they like the kid. Mm-hmm. Now, if the Giants move up, they're also not moving up to get Drake May because he'll be there at, at six, in my opinion. But, you know, does it really matter who the Giants quarterback is? <laughs> That's an interesting does question. Does it matter? Like, who are you throwing a football to? Just let, let's play that out. Yeah. Like you played wide receiver, and I know Slayton has had moments, of course. Mm-hmm. Jalen Hyatt, um, Hyatt, who's a deep threat yeah. that didn't get a lot yeah. of opportunities. You know, going deep because the offensive line was so bad. Their quarterbacks didn't have a lot of time to wait for him to get open going down the field. Like let's be, let's keep it real. We don't have Darren Wallace coming back at tight end because uh, he may retire, and if he does come back, unfortunately his body has uh, you know, betrayed him, mm-hmm. and he doesn't stay on the field as much as you want. And while, yeah, they'll have a better offensive line, I thought they did a very good job rebuilding that offensive line. I think their running game takes a hit, all right? They don't have a legitimate number one wide receiver on that team. So go get Drake May. Great. Who's he throwing it to? Go get J.J. McCarthy. Who's he throwing it to? You know, the Giants' defense will be the strength of that team, most notably the defensive line with Lawrence and Burns, obviously. But, uh, you, you know, to me... If you draft one of those kids, he's not going to play right away because you got Daniel Jones at some point healthy enough to play off the torn ACL. You gave Drew Locke five million bucks to be the number one backup to Daniel Jones and possibly start mm-hmm. if Danny can't play right away. So now I'm going to waste a first round draft pick, a top six pick on a quarterback that's never going to play. And if he does play, has nobody to throw the ball to. 
That doesn't sound like a smart decision. Yeah, but we also know the Giants are going to try to preserve Daniel Jones because of the the, the cap it, which he, uh, if he gets hurt. Yeah. But on top of that. Well, let me just explain to you what Willie's talking about just real quick. Yep. If Daniel Jones is not physically able to play a year from now, the New York Giants would eat 20-some-odd million dollars against the cap and dead cap money. So sure. there's going to come a point this year, regardless of what's happening, where they're going to have to make a tough decision, kind of like the Denver Broncos did with Russell Wilson last year. Sure. Are we going to put him out of the field? Field and risk injury, meaning if the Giants are el- eliminated from playoff competition. Now, Denver made that decision while they were still alive yeah. for a postseason berth. They may decide to sit Danny to get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're spot on. But also, you need to draft a quarterback because you need somebody. Like, if Drew Locke goes out there or Tommy D, Tommy DeVito goes out there, Giant fans won't be happy. They need a spark to what Victor's saying. So if you got a young gun, I can give him a little life. Why not? I can promise you this. This is a lock guarantee. The New York Giants will not draft Drake May. Not even no, on the table. I agree. I it's draft not even me. a consideration. If they move up, they're moving up to try to get McCarthy. Could, if they stay put, they're taking a non-quarterback. I could see them staying at six and trying to get one of those receivers, right? Marvin Harrison, if he's there, or, or the, the stud from LSU as yep. well. Neighbors. Neighbors. Exactly, yep. Yep, because th- that's their need. They need yeah. a wide receiver. Mm-hmm. They ain't got one. Moving on to third and football. We talk about May. We talk about Williams. We talk about Daniels. We talk about McCarthy. We don't talk much about Michael Penix Jr., but he impressed Ooh. at his pro day. He ran a 4-4-6-40, and see, he also threw it well. Seeing that 40 time, does that alleviate any of your medical concerns no. about his injury history? He's so hot, though, without that shirt on. Oh, yeah. A couple yeah. of talking about it. This is why I hate the pro day stuff, because Michael Penix is not going to be a good NFL quarterback. What? He, Whoa, he's what? not. You he's know not. that. He college, I know that. He led the college football I know that. You yards. know that. I know yeah. that. He's an injury waiting to happen because he has been, unfortunately, uh, throughout his, uh, his college career. Uh, I don't think he throws the ball all that well. He doesn't throw the ball all that hard. Um, Greg, I don't Greg think he's Watson. all that good. Yeah, he throws Greg. it really well. Oh, oh, yeah. good oh, he throws it really well. Uh, he that looks like an accurate throw to me. He throws yeah. it tight windows. All that looks like an accurate throw to me. If, if you draft Michael Dimes. Penix, if you draft Michael Penix, you're looking for another quarterback in two years. Oh, wow. He's not an NFL quarterback. Sorry, guys. Oh, wow. Like, you guys, this is what bothers me. How about you two guys? <laughs> How much uh, Michael Penix film did you watch? Not a lot. A lot. None. What do you think I do all day? The all day. day. Grind all grind day tape. I break down grind film. Tape. Grind here's, tape. Here's <laughs> what bothers me about you two guys. Because you did something we couldn't do. And I respect the hell out of it. You guys made it to the NFL. And especially you two guys specifically because yeah. of your college careers, mm-hmm. playing mm-hmm. at schools that don't produce, you know, a million NFL uh, players, well, right? Well, does, but okay. Hofstra's had a <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I count on you guys to walk me through what you see based on your experience. You don't have listen. you seen, you have you seen guys who can play I and guys who year. can't play? You know full well Michael Penix is not an NFL quarterback. I think he's a damn good quarterback. Talking about led the, league, led the college football in passing, fourth in touchdowns, threw through tight windows, led his team into victories. The kids, kids a leader. Everybody Dying. played around him. I mean, he had that big – what's the big receiver coming out? DZ, I can't say oh, his no, name. No, Thank you. Him, that connection between them two was amazing. I mean, the kid's a ball player. I, I t- I'll take him over Drake May and J.J. McCarthy. Oh, I like oh, it. Stop. I like oh, it, really. Oh, stop. I like I will take him over Drake May and J.J. McCarthy right now. If he was, if I was not this in Daily history, Day. If it wasn't for his medical history, he would be going top. No question. He's Hold like, on, time out. You, you can't say I mean, that. Well, he's healthy that. now. He's healthy now. But, 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 he wasn't for things in the past. He doesn't he's stay now. healthy. His medical history is not good. Yeah, You're not, he so he's that. the face of your franchise when you know the guy can't stay healthy? But we're going to sit here and talk about? about Drake May to and, the Giants? And by the way, I'll tell you one other thing that bothers me about you guys. You know, the, the, because of the COVID year and the extra year guys mm. were allowed to play, and I respect that because a lot of kids lost a uh, full year of football. Dude's 24 years old. Oh, well, that's a when plus. Has, right, no. But that, how, how old was Joe Burrow? Dude, if Joe you, Burrow got, he got drafted. Which is older. why Plus. there are times if you give me a 24-year-old guy against kids in college, he better shine <laughs> because he's five he's years old. So you want to knock kid because he's locker room ready? No, what I'm saying is a 24-year-old adult man playing college football should be better it's, than a 19-year-old. It's not like he's a 270-pound lineman just abusing everybody. He's a quarterback that still has to make the throws Who, and lead the team. I'll get, this is the promise. And I, I hate to say it because I'm sure he's a good kid and I feel bad Did being that guy. Did you have that, that energy for Chris Winky? Uh, Chris Winky was 93 when he graduated college. I love Chris Winky. Yeah, a lot I of people it. did. Yeah. Here's the reality. The general manager 
that drafts Penix in the first round will be fired within two years of that selection. No, oh, Craig. Put it down. Put it in the draw. Please. Put it in the draw. No. Put it, look, Stop. put it the in the draw. He's a stud. Coming up, UConn uh, is the best team in college basketball. They proved that again uh, last night. We got a little tournament talk for you. And Draymond Green actually said something stupid yesterday. <laughs> so, but you hear what he had to say. Coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Carton Show. Remember a couple days ago when Draymond Green got ejected from the game just four minutes in? Well, the Draymond Green Show had Draymond Green as a guest, and Draymond Green explained on the Draymond Green Show exactly what happened to get him ejected from the game. Here he is. Back to uh, getting kicked out the game. It just can't happen. I, I said what I said. I deserved to get kicked out at that point. And what I said, if I'm all the way honest with y'all, I Kind of was trying to turn my body and angle and go to the bench. And I said what I said, like, a little too soon before angling my body oh. to the bench. Um, but, yeah, it just can't happen. Craig, what do you think about that explanation? I'm so tired of this clown. Um, so, in other words, if I turn my shoulder and still use the vulgar language I use towards the refs, I wouldn't have been kicked out. Like, it's enough. And, you know, all he's doing is hurting his team. But he doesn't care, obviously. And that's why you saw a frustrated Steph Curry on the court because, yo, know, they need him. Yeah. And that's the right. We're not talking about a scrub. You're not talking about a guy that can't play basketball and bring things to the table that are important to help the Warriors win. But there's a difference, you know, when you're the one or two seed, oh, it's cute. Oh, look at Draymond Green getting kicked out of another game and getting another technical. When you're fighting for your playoff lives, like they are, sitting in the final spot, knowing that the hottest team in basketball is only a game behind you in the loss column, and you're pulling these antics, it's not cute. It's not fun. And as much as I think, look, I think he's got problems. I think he has personality defects. I think he has mental health issues. And I think... Oh, uh, you must have cheated. Yeah, you must have cheated. I didn't see that coming. Oh, no, I did. I have a lot more to say. Maybe I'll have my own podcast. <laughs> and I'll say it. On the Time now for the top five, five at nine. nine. Start? Let's start with number five. 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 Kansas five. 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 Number five. five. There boy. Kansas City Chiefs owner Clark Hunt, Mike's brother, was voted the worst owner. <laughs> Should I do that? You got Willie. Yeah. He was just voted by the players yep. as the worst owner in the NFL. That's despite the fact that they've won back-to-back -back Super Bowls and going for number three. And the reason behind it is the players claim he promised that he would revamp the entire locker room and make it, you know, first class. His response was, I couldn't do that. Because you guys were in the Super Bowl again, and I didn't have time. What? <laughs> well, no, if you've been to, listen, the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you go to their facility, when I was there, it was bare bones. But we were going to playoffs and win the Super Bowl. So great teams don't spend their money on facilities. They spend it on the ball players because those are the guys that yes. make the magic in the state. Like, there was even a story that this past year, and you guys can speak to this, that normally in most NFL locker rooms now, which is like country club, you know, nice, that you have your own chair. It might be a nice leather chair, whatever it might be. Yeah. No chairs in the Chiefs locker room this so past what? year. Well, that's uh, that's not a you know who has a, you know who has a, a stool? Yeah, it's just saying that people like chairs. You know who has an amazing facility? No. The New York Jets. Thank you. And you know yeah. what their record was? <laughs> yeah. We didn't have a quarterback. That's yeah, a very, yeah, very, yeah, very, very, yeah, very yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, his brother Mike does not speak a lot, um, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, my number four, four. the Bob. New York Knickerbockers yeah. had a great night last night Big win for because the, the Milwaukee Bucks suck and they lost last night. So the Knicks are now just a game in the loss column, mm -hmm. one and a half overall, but a game out of the number two seed. And I keep telling you. If you want to win an NBA title, you're going to have to do some dancing oh. with my man, <laughs> Jalen Brunson, cha, cha, cha. because the Knicks are going to be the two seed. And then despite the fact that you and your friend over there, Mr. Jacoby, yeah. are, 
are scared Duck of the Eagles. Now I'm not scared. Oh, we ain't scared, scared at all. We ain't, the ain't, Duck we ain't smoke. scared of nobody. Bring on the Miami. I'm scared yeah. of the Eagles. No, I, I, I want the Sixers. I don't trust MB's knee, but when OG's in the lineup, we're 15-2. We got Mitchell Robinson back. This team will be better. I want the Sixers because we can beat them in the first round. And well, then on. why don't you sing a song with the rest of us? Go New York. Hey, go New York. York go. Go, go New York. York go New York. Go. Hey. go. You know, the guy, the guy that wrote that song owns the Atlanta Hawks, by the way. Uh, true story. <laughs> Number three. There's UConn. And then there's everybody else who's playing oh, yeah, in the second place. Good scene. It's true, I mean, this is a dominant performance last night against San Diego State. Wire to wire, 30-point win. They are complete. They've got depth. They play defense. And they've got a really good offense as well. Best coach in America best team in America, and if you thought what Gina Oriema did with the ladies program there, mm. Dan Hurley is starting to do something very similar. They're going to be a problem for years to come. Well, listen, I grew up loving UConn basketball, especially with Rip Hamilton. You talking about Khalid Alamine and all those guys when they have been a Venom waiver. That's how I, that's those are UConn Huskies I remember. If they can get back to that form, yeah. they may have And I want to be clear, said. I have always hated UConn, yeah. and I hated Jim Calhoun, yeah. what? but I like Danny Hurley a lot. And you're talking about a dynasty in the making. Yeah, I like Danny Hurley, too. And to go back into some New Jersey basketball history, they're playing like the old St. Anthony squad. They're never flashy. They're playing flex basketball. Everybody's getting in touch. Everybody's backdoor, backdoor passes, making the right plays. That's what it feels they'll, like. And he's they'll be favored. That's crazy. They'll that sounded like a ditty party for a second. Uh, be careful. They will be I can't favored say the word in every game they anymore. play. They'll be favored in every game they play, but that doesn't mean they're going to win. Because we, it's a tournament. All it takes is one game. One game. Out, one game. game. It's over. Can't Sad. say back door anymore. You just said twice. What did you just say? Don't worry about it. <laughs> the bounce pass. It was a two person shot. Number two. <laughs> great to have baseball back, and great that the New York Yankees yesterday. After getting in a 4 0 hole against the Astros, take the lead 5 4. And Soto, right there, who had a big RBI single earlier in the game, throws a dude out at the plate. That would have been the tying run. And then, with a couple guys on base in the ninth, Holmes gets out of it. Sharp hit ball to shortstop, forced out at second base. And the New York Yankees start the year off with a dub on the road against the Houston Astros. Yeah, it was big, man, considering that we didn't have Garrett Cole in the lineup. He's going to be on a 60-day uh, IL. But yep. overall, man, if you're the Yankees right now, you got to be happy that your stud and Juan Soto had a game-winning yeah. thrill. Well, yeah. It's, it's not just that. Win. Both New York baseball teams are undefeated right now. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. The New York Mets got rained out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Both undefeated. Yeah, they, uh, they, they start lying. today. Both undefeated. And as Victor told me during the last break, Soto is on pace for 162 RBIs this year. Also not a lot. Uh, which would not, not be a record, but he's on pace <laughs> for a buck 62. And that brings us to number one. one. Isaiah Hartenstein <laughs> is black, but all I care about is the orange and blue and white. Right. But he is, he's, he's black. You gotta explain. Uh, uh, he doesn't look black. Yep. But he was asked on a There's podcast a black yesterday. A little black in there. Yeah, that's uh, that's what's funny about you guys. That's that. After you guys, the fact, yeah, you, two days ago, yeah, here's what's you weren't saying that. Like two days ago, that's the whitest dude in the league. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. you guys are trying to find the blackness in him. Now he's invited to the Juneteenth parade. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, welcome, buddy. You can come with me. So it turns out his dad is black. black he played yeah. in Oregon. Yep. Uh, I guess played some Pro Bowl over in Germany. Uh, and he was asked by uh, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart on their best friends or roommates, pardon me, podcast. Yo, let's, you know, what's going on? And I'll let you hear it. Here's that podcast yesterday. And Isaiah Hartenstein explained that he is indeed black. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, are you black? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to cover that. I'm actually happy about this. Ex explain your blackness. <laughs> what level of blackness? Like my level of blackness. I mean, I, I put... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's like light skin. I'm, I'm bright skin. Ooh. So, oh, like, okay. Above, bright skin. I like that. I'm above. My child's bright skin. I'm, I'm above light skin. No, but yeah, my dad's black. There you go. So it's official. And for some reason, that makes you guys very happy. It's also my first time hearing him speak. That's a black man, guys. Okay? Oh. <laughs> That's a black man right there, okay? That's a black voice. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a black voice. I'm going to sit over here. <laughs> no. I'm going to sit over here. Let you guys have your fun. Go ahead. I'll sit back. And, I mean, uh, it's fun to be black in the light. 
<laughs> be black in the dark. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, uh, we should probably take a break, Jacoby. Go ahead. <laughs> take a break. I'm a little uncomfortable. I can't lie. Uh, you know who else is uncomfortable? The Golden State Warriors. Why? Because there's a chance they might not just miss the playoffs. They might miss the plan. We'll explain why right after this. I hope they do. Good morning. Welcome back to the home stretch on Friday, the Curtain Show. And we start with the home stretch of the NBA season. When you look at what is at stake in the play and positioning in the Western Conference, it is much more intriguing than the top of the conference. The Mavericks are holding on to the sixth seed. You've got Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry all in the play-in, and the Red Hot Rockets trying to kick out the Warriors. When you look at these teams, Craig, if you're a top two seed, which is the most dangerous team on that board? The most dangerous team, I think, is still the Phoenix Suns because they can score and have three generational scores. They just haven't played a lot of games together. You know, and that brings to mind a conversation we should probably have about Kevin Durant at some point. You know, we know why it didn't work out in Brooklyn. I'm not putting it all on him the first year he didn't play, obviously. And then all the nonsense with Kyrie, you know, et cetera. And then James Harden, you know, turning his back on the franchise. But at some point, we're going to have to have that tough conversation regarding one of the great scorers in the history of basketball in Kevin Durant, who isn't a guy that you can build a franchise around, apparently. He isn't a guy as great as he is that can guarantee your team gets to the next level and makes the run to a conference final, let alone an NBA final. And I, for me, the Phoenix Suns are the most disappointing team of all those teams that are still, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You can make the argument that Dallas should be there, too, considering you have Kyrie, who, for my money, is one of the greatest guards to ever play the sport of basketball, and Luka, one of the generational scorer uh, in that. But to me, this team has three guys who, on any given night, can put 30 in the the hole, right? Mm -hmm. And there's something wrong with them. We knew that they weren't going to be the greatest defensive team, and we did question depth a little bit before that, that late trade before the season started. But this is a team that gets no attention. They have not had that run that we're watching the Houston Rockets go on right now. And to me, if I'm Denver specifically, but beyond that, you're the two upstart teams out of West Minnesota who obviously loses towns, and that is a big deal. Uh, And, of course, Oklahoma City, I ain't worried about any of them because I've played them all, you know, throughout the year. I've won my fair share of those games against all those teams. And those teams are all one thing that we're not, and that's old. And when you're playing playoff basketball, as you guys all know, if you can't get up and down the court these days, it's very hard to win when you're totally reliant on half-court offenses. you got to score on the fast break. you got to have three on two, two on ones. And frankly, those teams don't do that a lot. Those teams rely on... Half-court offenses for 90-plus percent of all their points. Now, you see LeBron, he's LeBron, right? He is going to play every day in the playoffs. And Anthony Davis has had a very good year. But if I'm those young upstart teams, I'm not worried about any of them because I think I can uh, out-athletic them in a seven-game series. You know, Golden State's broken, obviously. And Steph Curry's not the dominant player he was. The Phoenix Suns offense has not been what we thought it would be. Once they acquired Beal and uh, the three of them, Booker, Beal, and KD, have played, what, 18 games together? Something like that, right? A low amount of games. So to ask them to just suddenly turn it on and outscore everybody is not going to happen. I'm also disappointed in the Sacramento Kings off of last year when I thought, you know, Monk and Fox were going to all of a sudden take the West by storm. And they've had some moments and some bonus. Uh, and they haven't lived up to expectations this year. So I think more so than maybe any other year, while I can give you the Boston Celtics as a lock to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I think I can say that about the Denver Nuggets. Oh, you can say about that. Okay. The Conference Finals, sure. you can say it. I don't For think sure. I can say it about anyone else. No. I don't. I, no. I think it's a complete crapshoot for who Denver plays in the final and who Boston plays in the final. I yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Knicks. Well, I'm trying to be nice. Uh, No, no, for me, I I don't know how you could discount the Lakers. I understand LeBron's dealing with the ankle, but I think he's going to be ready. Considering that they were in the West Conference Finals last year, Mm -hmm. and you talk about the way AD's playing, especially the night he had, where he actually played over 50 minutes. He actually was the big factor in that ball game. You talk about Austin Reeves and obviously uh, Rui. I think this team can't come alive in the playoffs. Now, if if LeBron's healthy, he's going to play every game. He's He's going to put the team on his back. 
Whoever's going to be the eighth seed is going to lose to Denver. Whoever the seventh seed is is going to have a real chance against who were the number two seed, whether it's the Timberwolves or the Thunder. Because I want to see who that is before I make my prediction. But I'm going to look long and hard. I'm assuming Denver gets the number one seed. I'm going to look long and hard at the 2-7 matchup. Yeah. Because, because I could see the Timberwolves losing to whoever. Yeah, and look, losing Towns is a big deal. I, what we learned about Anthony Edwards is that he is good enough to carry you in a particular game. Can he carry Minnesota against uh, a team that's got a lot of playoff experience yeah. over a seven-game uh, series. And that, you know, that's the We just don't know the answer because he hasn't had to. Minnesota's also got this other little thing going on right now, which is a distraction. And that's the fact that Glenn Taylor was selling the franchise to Mark Lohr, or Lohr, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, and, of course, Alex Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. And apparently that deal just got scuttled. Mm-hmm. And for a team that's going on their best run in a very, very long time, mm-hmm. you have this other thing going on that the players can't escape because they're being asked about it. And there's supposed to be this transition of uh, majority ownership of the T-Wolves, and I don't I know all the details about it, but that story's brewing out there, and it's a major distraction in Minnesota. I will say this. As a, just as you guys are, a devout basketball fan who's thrilled that our Knicks are going to make a run, a legitimate run, and that's not just hyperbole. Right. They're that's good real. enough to get to an Eastern Conference real. Finals. Uh, they lose in the and roll the round, dice. Failure. Major failure, major. right? The West is going to be put your feet up and eat some popcorn. It's going to be loud. Because, and not just the play-in game, All which it. could be a one-and-done for some yeah. or two-and-done you know, for the, uh, the, the, other, the higher seeds there. But even the first round, like, if you have not seen a lot of basketball, whether it be the Kings, Oklahoma City, you know, these young teams Clippers. that yeah. are making Clippers, a run, yeah. the Clippers who have major star town yep. and they have put it together, and Westbrook is back now off the broken hand. That first round is going to be money. Yeah, Outside of the 1-8, night. it's going to be six, seven games. Six. I agree. Yeah. And I do think the Denver Nuggets will be the one seed. I, I know so. Minnesota's still hanging on a half game back, a game in the loss column. But when it comes to Western Conference playoff basketball, we can all do it together. <laughs> Slurp it up. Oh I want it. No, Slurp it up not. and get not. ready to have a good time. I will never. Like April's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Slurp it up. Guys, no. should we move on? That's much. Thanks. All right. So. Let's move on to the second headline. The Floos is loose. <laughs> of course, we're talking smart? about Bears head coach Matt Eber Floos. Yeah. This is what he said about his future number one pick quarterback. Quote, what I love to see was the interaction with the other players. You can certainly see those players love him, respect him, and what he's brought to the table. You can see his character. His football character there. Craig, yeah. what do you think about Eberflus celebrating the football character of I, Caleb Williams? Look, I think he's the, the generational talent. He's going to be a great quarterback, in my opinion, in the NFL. And Chicago's going to have arguably the best quarterback they've had in a quarter century. Or forever. All right, all right? which is a big, big deal for that franchise. Like our Jets been searching for a quarterback forever. But th- what he's saying there is not accurate. Because the players at USC don't all love him because he turned his back on those guys when it came to playing in the bowl game, the Holiday Bowl. I have his stats from the Holiday Bowl if you want to see it. Uh, it's goose eggs across the board because <laughs> oh. that's how much he cared about the other guys. No attempts? Now, I was the guy telling you I give him credit for participating in the pro day, which he didn't do for himself. He did it so the wide receivers and some of the skill position guys that are being looked at as potential draft picks got their best chance to show off their skills. And I do respect that a great deal. But I do not respect the guy, and I understand the reason why and the financial consideration to why you don't want to get hurt before you go pro, especially when you're looking at a $40 million guaranteed contract right out of the gate. But, man, you're a football player. Go play football. And when you turn your back on the other 100 guys in a college locker room and say, "Uh, I'm too good for you guys, I'm not playing, and I know a lot of other quarterbacks did it as well, so this is not only about Caleb Williams, I don't like that. Now, that being said, I still draft him number one because I understand why he did it. But I know full well, and you guys can speak to this, the day he gets to Chicago, I don't know which player it's going to be, but there's going to be a guy waiting for him to walk him through what it's like to be a pro and what's not going to be tolerated in this locker room. And I don't know if that was a guy that you might have been that guy. Maybe you, I know with the young wide receivers, you were that guy. But someone's going to pull him aside and go, look, that California crap, you're leaving in California. You're now in a blue-collar town where the team that's been desperate for a quarterback 
do it the right way so you don't lose people day one. Yeah, in reference to, uh, you know, Caleb Williams not playing in the bowl game, allow me to do my Craig Carton inter- interpretation with my hands. <laughs> and let's go. Let's get all back. No slurping. Uh, no, there'll be no slurping out of Willie Cologne. Uh, Craig, your favorite quarterback actually played for the New York Jets, and they were Zach Wilson, who did play in the Holiday Bowl, and this was his stats. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, let's throw this up there. I love this. Oh, this is amazing. I, I had to dig deep for this, but we found it. Uh-huh, go okay. ahead. Oh, look at that. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Five touchdowns. That's right. Look Ball at that. In. That's the guy that doesn't turn his oh, back yeah, draft hit on number his two. teammates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great now, character, football character. To be right fair, yeah. great guy. He never had an offensive line. Never, <laughs> never. <Nope>. Look, uh, <laughs> look, I want to be clear, and I, that's why I made the point. I draft Caleb Williams number one. He is a no doubt about it generational talent who I think is going to have great success, and he's going to have his pains as well, obviously, as every quarterback does in the NFL. I just don't like the fact that even Flutes is talking about how the guys love him and adore him because I know that there are guys in that locker room who are like, wait a minute, we got to the Holiday Bowl. It's not the bowl game we wanted to play in, and now you're turning your back on me? Now, that being said, his replacement in that game also threw for like 900 (laughs) yards. So it's all good there. But I would say this about uh, Iberflus. Eberflus better watch himself. Oh, no question. It's a big year for his no coaching time. career. Oh, yeah. Big I'm time. surprised he's still coaching. While we talk about, you know, the job security or lack thereof of certain guys in the league, like our own Robert Sala, of course, and the New York Jets, I had Eberflus to that list. Mm-hmm. You know, if this doesn't get off right, considering all the moves Ryan Poles has made as GM there, Eberflus doesn't have the resume to support a really bad year. So I put him on that short list of guys to keep an eye on based on how it Chicago sounds starts. sounds like he's convincing himself here. Like he's saying all of these things, looking at more tape, looking at different yeah. players of Caleb Williams and being like, okay, reconvincing himself that he's the guy. A lot of yeah. discussion around Williams involves – Pardon me one sec. You guys agree Caleb is the guy, right? 100%. All right, we're on the, we're on the same yeah, page. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. 100%. A lot of discussions around Caleb this week has been about his appearance at the USC Juju Watkins tournament game in yeah. which he had his nails painted, his foam pink, perhaps some little gloss on his lips or something. Now he responds to this on social media, and I love the way he handled it. Here is the number one pick. Let's see what that phone looks What the phone looks like? <laughs> Let's see what color the phone is. The wallet white. The wallet white. Phone, phone is pink. Case is clear. What the fuck is that? Like? Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your girl loves them. Said your girl loves his lips. I love it. That's my quarterback right there. Yeah. That's my quarterback right there. Comfortable with who he is. Talk that talk. Right? And I don't care. Pink, black, red. Who cares, right? I think there's a a level of homophobia out there when it comes to uh, football being a tough man sport and all that. Mm -hmm. And you see a kid who's very comfortable with who he is, who might paint his fingernails. And, you know, oh, no. Oh, no. That's not masculine enough. Uh, Shut up. The dude could play quarterback, right? Mm -hmm. Period. And I love that because that's the guy who totally gets it. Yeah. That's the guy that reads the hate. And it's like, look, my nails are clear, my lips are a little pink, and your Your girl girl loves it. (laughs) And I'm like, I better call her up right now. (laughs) No, but I I, look, I like that. I think we go overboard with this. Yo, you have to be a man's man. You can't do certain things or wear certain things. Now, that being said, that being said, you know the other side. You go in the locker room, you know, with some pink stuff. There will be some guys in an NFL well, locker nowadays, room that you question. The way yeah. the locker rooms are set up nowadays, you're going to be the only one wearing pink. And, uh, right. nail polish and, and my thing is, like, I've clear. played with enough eccentric guys, right? Guys sure. who just like, man, I don't know where this guy's coming from. But at the end of the day, when he pops off the tape, you're like, that's my guy. That's my yeah. guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So now yeah. you start wearing Start 3-0, like, hey, you know, start 3-0. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Pass me that pop. Look, I've traveled with and covered NFL teams in my day way a long, long time ago. And Willie's being kind with what he just I said, am. using the word eccentric. <laughs> there are some crazy dudes <laughs> yeah. uh, in NFL locker rooms who do true. stuff that would make you go, like, yeah, you can't babysit my kids. <laughs> yeah. But I love having him as a up. teammate. So and up. he's so not true. one of those guys, but he'll be just fine. And he will learn very quickly kind of the do's and don'ts of a locker room mm-hmm. and uh, the NFL. And I think the kid's going to be great. Moving on from Caleb Daniels to Jaden Wood Daniels. I'm sorry, Caleb Williams to Jaden okay. Daniels, the LSU quarterback who had his pro day, and at his pro day, his head coach Brian Kelly of LSU um, 
He, he might have said something he should have said. Uh, he, he is going to be so committed to taking care of himself um, that you don't have to worry about size or he doesn't weigh enough. Uh, Lamar's done a pretty good job with his size. I think uh, Mahomes, I wouldn't consider him a giant because he's going to get the ball out to the playmakers and, and make plays uh, for Washington. Wait! For what? Did for Brian who? Kelly just say what? For Washington, who has the number two pick? Did he just give away the number two pick of the NFL draft? Sounded Uh-oh. Like. But I can tell you what. People in New England are pretty happy about that. <laughs> right? Because they don't want Jaden Daniels. They apparently want J.J. McCarthy. Uh, look, it's uh, sometimes you got to be careful who you tell things to. No question. Like, there's, there's, you you got to know who you can keep a secret with and who you can't. Now, I'm not sure if that came from relationships Kelly has with certain coaches yeah. in Washington or maybe J.J. Jaden is like, hey, coach, guess what? You know, Washington reached out like, I'm their guy. That could be the case, too. Yeah, at the end of the day, you also saw the new OC for the Commodores is Cliff, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, right? Yep. So he has a, probably does like Jaden. At the end of the day, uh, my thing with the young fella is he's got put on weight. Valley, he has like that Lamar Jackson type frame. Yep. But Lamar Jackson is a different animal. He has a speed that can get away from guys. This kid is not that type of guy. He can deliver the football and has pretty good stats. Overall, they need somebody, if you're the Commodores right now, who can lead this team. The problem, this team doesn't have any weapons. They don't have any players. Are so, they the Commodores? Did, we, did they change? Yeah, the uh, Commanders. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I kind of like the Commodores. The Commodores. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> great, great, great band. band. Right. Yeah. Damn good band. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, man, like, I, uh, I hope the kit pans out, but I think uh, Kelly dropped it down. Uh, I, sure think he, I don't think he did it on purpose. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you keep talking, you don't know how to stop. And you say things you're not supposed to say. I'm trying to think top of my head, not to put anyone on the spot here. Who's the last Heisman Trophy winning quarterback that became a rock star in the NFL? Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. There you go. There Lamar, you go. Jackson. Yeah, Lamar Jackson. All right. Joe Burrow. Don't attack Joe Burrow. Yeah. 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 So I'm just asking a question. One point I want to make about, about Joe Burrow. About Jaden yeah. Daniels. Where did Joe Burrow go to school? LSU. LSU. But he oh. also went somewhere first, That's, which is exactly what Jaden Daniels did as well. And Very one true. thing about Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels at LSU is they had absolute stud receivers. Because mm. you're going to see both of his receivers, yeah. Neighbors and, and BTJ, they're going to go in the first round. So there's a little bit where you're like, is it Jaden Daniels? Or did he just have great receivers like Neighbors? Yeah, well, look, you still got to throw the ball. You're right, and as much as you have the benefit of having, you know, back in Joe Burrow's day, you know, Jamar Chase yeah. out there. Yeah, and, Justin Jefferson. And, yeah. and Justin Jefferson, exactly. uh, which obviously makes your job a lot easier. Yeah, this is comparable. You're still going to be able to throw the rock. Um, so, look, these guys are first-round draft picks, right? Uh, yeah. Which means, again, if you're a New York Giant fan, if the Giants stay at six, if you played this out just real quick, where the Chargers don't trade their pick, all right, then the Chargers to me take Marvin Harrison Jr. Yep. as the first non-quarterback taken, right? Neighbors. And then the Giants sit there at six. Neighbors. I don't think you take your quarterback at six. Neighbors. I think you take you one of the, the I think you take neighbors. Take because receiver. there's such a desperate need for the New York Giants to have a legitimate number one wide receiver. Yeah. Now, if the Chargers trade back and let a team like, I don't know, the, the Denver Broncos, let's say, move up to four, then five and six becomes very interesting. Right. But I do think Marvin Harrison will be the first non-quarterback taken. Hey. Happy Easter. I like Happy the rest of you. What do we got here, Chris? We're enjoying a little pizza rooster from Telercio's. It's rooster. Easter pie for everybody. Yummy.